You are watching game 75 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our good friends over at Zappos. The 41 and 28 Savannah Bananas, 30 and 25 against their arch rivals, the Party Animals, looking to bounce back after a historic and crushing defeat two nights ago in Brockton, Massachusetts. We come to you live from Hadlock Field in Portland, Maine, home of the Portland Sea Dogs, double-A affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. And the full capacity crowd, over 7,000 jammed in, fired up for the first ever banana ball game here from the border state. Let's take a look at how these jubilant bananas will align defensively from left to right in the outfield. It is Michael Deeb, D.R. Meadows, and Danny Hosley going third to first in the infield. Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Eric Jones Jr., and Dakota McFadden. Bill Leroy is behind the dish, and his battery mate for the better part of the last seven years, Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, is on the mound. You're seeing a slightly adjusted defensive alignment for the Bananas with EJ moving over from first into second base tonight. Danny Hosley, of course, has manned right plenty this season, so you might see a little bit of a defensive step back for the Bananas, but Tyler Gillum and Coach Adam Byron have been really impressed with the way Dakota McFadden's been able to hold down first base for the team. We'll see if he can record his first trick play tonight for the Bananas. Let's get a gander in on Kyle Lewigs on the bump, the pride of Richmond Hill, Georgia, in his sixth campaign as a banana, his seventh year throwing to Bill Leroy since they teamed up as freshmen at the University of North Georgia. And were there for the next four and a half years before Mr. Lewigs finished up at Jacksonville State in Alabama. He's the tour leader in innings pitched and the only man above 100 strikeouts. And let's not forget, he is also tied for the tour lead with nine wins on the season. For Kyle, his last start came against a challenger, the Staten Island Ferry Hawks, five innings pitched, eight hits, three runs earned, only one sprint and four Ks. He earned one point and lost one point. Kyle threw just 72 pitches. He was very efficient, and the MPI below four minutes at three minutes and 56 seconds. If we see that from Kyle tonight against the party animals, he is going to be A-OK -okay and give the Bananas a great chance to get back in the wood column tonight. Let's get another glimpse at this party animals line up as we are mere seconds from first pitch. It is Reese Hampton, Dalton Cornett, and Tanner Thomas due to swing it in the first. Bryson Bloomer cleaning it up. Behind him, Jake Skull, Garrett Delano, Joe Lytle, Sam Claycamp, Dustin Baber, and Chase Aka. Let's throw it down to Jesse Cole. Banana Nation, it's time. So on three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. When the man in the yellow tux declares it, so shall it be. For the first time in this young sports history, we play banana ball in Maine. It is the northernmost spot we're hitting on our 33 city 87 game tour this is the 29th stop and the 36th city to get live banana ball that is all time dating back to of course first savannah and then mobile alabama in 2021 on the one city world tour reese hampton is the best hitter that either team boasts former detroit tigers minor leaguer spent three years in their farm system one more as an Arizona Diamondbacks minor leaguer. Fouls this one left side. The fans cannot make a play on it. And a one-two count on the Party Animals left fielder, who's 388 batting average, 454 on base percentage, and 653 slugging percentage are all the top notch. And boy, did Reese prove his value in his last start. He was on base three times, and of course, the walk-off in showdowns. And despite lining this one to right field, it is Danny Hosley crashing in and making a beautiful diving catch to start this ball game. 90 mile an hour fastball, 90 miles off the bat. According to Trackman and Danny Do-It-All, flashing the leather to keep this tour's best hitter off the bags. 
And Danny, he just has not been playing in the outfield as much as he was about June and May for the Bananas. But nonetheless, you see a comfortable, confident player out there in right field and just not phased at all having that one hit to him so early on in the ball game. Well, just like Hampton before him, Dalton Cornett in his second world tour. And the party animals catcher, the pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky, where he grew up and then went to college at Alice Lloyd is aboard with the first hit of this ball game. Cornette hitting 333, reaching base at a 401 clip, a 490 slugging percentage. He's having an incredible second tour, as is Tanner Thomas, who is also in round two with the party animals and the right fielder hitting 299, a 352 on base percentage, a 453 slug. Yeah, and you're seeing that on-base percentage continue to rise for Tanner Thomas. He had six sprints entering the month of July and now has doubled his total with five in July and then three more here in August. That was a really snazzy over-the-shoulder sliding snag by our TikTok superstar Jackson Olsen. He helps Kyle retire his 2018 and 19 collegiate Bananas teammate. And now Kyle's 2021 collegiate teammate, Bryson Bloomer, stands in the way of him recording a scoreless first inning. And there's nothing more encouraging for you as a starting pitcher, especially early on in the first inning, seeing your defense making really good plays behind you. And Bryson Bloomer pumping his fist in jubilation because he didn't chase the Kyle Lewick slider. And boy, he didn't miss the 1-0 offering. That thing a moonshot, a monster mash over the 37-foot wall and left, and the party animals have a two-spot here in the first. I don't know if Bryson Bloomer was playing the mental game there with Kyle after the first pitch slider or not, but it was Kyle putting one over the zone for Bloomer, and man, this guy has not missed. We are seeing quite the power surge for Bloomer, his third home run in 11 games. And his seventh bomb overall on the tour as he backs that big old booty onto home plate and waits for his party animals teammates to finish the spank train. A new take on the conga as the boomer takes Kyle Lewigs deep for the second time on the tour. The first was a straightaway shot to center field in Riverwalk Stadium in Montgomery, Alabama. Third time he actually homered off of Kyle in Grayson Stadium on the 26th of August. 26th April. of April. 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 There it is. Okay, we figured it out. Michael Deeb on the run. Can't make a sliding and tumbling catch. So Jake Skoll will grab his 20th double on the tour and his 34th extra base hit overall. He's three behind Reese Hampton for the season high. And it's Jake Skoll who is really back to being the type of player we saw early on in the tour, especially with these extra base hits. And what's more, he's not just driving them out to right field every time. Such a good professional opposite field hitter as evidenced right there. There's a whole lot of reasons why the Texas Rangers grabbed him with the 15th overall pick back in 2010. Spent five years in their organization, two more as a New York Yankees farmhand and spent four years of playing SEC football at UGA, and now in his third world tour, his first for the bad guys. Garrett Delano in his second campaign for the party animals. Takes that one at the bottom of the zone, just like Tanner Thomas, who popped out to third this inning. Delano, a teammate of Kyle Lewig's back in 2018. And it was both their maiden voyage in Banana Land. Delano been one of the better pitchers on this tour, but a John Olerud finalist in his college days. He can swing the lumber awful well as well, but Mr. Lewix will get the big strikeout to staunch the bleeding after Bryson Bloomer smashes a two-run shot with two outs, and the Nanners will need two runs to tie this inning, three runs to win it. Good work by Kyle Lewigs being able to settle back in there with Garrett Delano, and he had him tied up there on the... 0-2 pitch. I think Delano was looking for slider low in the zone and said it was Kyle gassing him up. We have the world's slowest race here as we head to the bottom of the second inning. There is no promotion that has a higher percentage of no action than the world's slowest race. But as you can see right here, when the kids want to crawl, it is a magnificent sight. 
Unfortunately, our middle contestant there not having the time of her life. I think our middle contestant hit their head, and, and that is not what you like to see. Look at this. This baby might console our friend. We'll check back in on the world's slowest race once we're done looking at how the party animals will align defensively tonight. From left to right in the outfield, it is Reese Hampton, Jake Skoll, and Tanner Thomas. Third to first in the infield gives you Bryson Bloomer, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Sam Claycamp. Dalton Cornett is behind the dish, and Dylan Porter gets the start on the mound. We might be on the verge of some banana ball history in tonight's contest with the party animals. Just three trick plays away from 200. So look for Dustin Baber, Chase Acuff up the middle to be trying to pile those on. But Reese Hampton with a trick play in his last game. You never know when he, Jake Skull, or Tanner Thomas can catch one behind the back. Perfect time to check back in on the world's slowest race where... After a whole lot of diddling around, we have a winner. And the tears were all worth it. That's what we call delayed gratification, is we'll get a quick look at Dylan Porter on the bump, the pride of Oakland, California, and who spent time at Santa Barbara City College, Washington State University, and finished up as a privateer at the University of New Orleans. We'll gear up for the top of the Nanners lineup. And this is Porter's 17th start of the season. He's got a 110 ERA plus. And for Porter, I think it's all about staying calm and pounding the zone out there for the party animals. Dior Meadows at the top of the lineup. A collegiate banana a summer ago helped the Nanners win their second straight Pettit Cup. An infielder in his first season as a banana now in his first year as a pro he has just about only played center field now dylan porter will pistol squat and all of his teammates joining in of course dr meadows is going to take advantage of the group boogie if you could call it that and lays the base hit to right that is dr meadows 19th hit to the opposite field and with Dylan Porter kind of running that on the inside part of the plate. It's DR just inside outing that. And Tanner Thomas kind of getting in on the fun with the Porter with the pistol squat. Couldn't quite get the jump he needed to make that catch there. I think even if he was in a professional ready position, he didn't have a chance at that one. Now a very dangerous base runner aboard as Meadow Scampers back to the bag standing. Michael Deeb, the left fielder, represents the first innings potential tying run. He's got three bombs here in his third world tour. Started his collegiate athletics career with four years of football at Notre Dame. And then went to Bethune-Cookman for a couple years of collegiate baseball. Spent time in the Chicago White Sox minor league system as he fouls this one off. And it is not caught by fans. And a quick 0-2 count on the kid out of Davie, Florida. Yeah, and it's Michael Deep. We've seen him move up to the two spot over the last month and a half for the Bananas. And he's earned three ball four sprints here in the month of August. The last two months he's gotten on base 40% of the time, both times. So that's a big reason why you want someone batting so high in your order. And also it gets him the at-bats that he so desires. Another fastball fouled back. And as you surmised on the pregame show, Josh, you have been right. Dylan Porter sitting about 89, 90 miles an hour with the fastball compared to 93 and 94 in his relief appearance on Monday night in Hartford, Connecticut. And really, it's all about just making sure you can conserve your arm as the game goes on and work deep into this ball game. And I'm sure that's what the party animals want out of Dylan Porter, con considering we've seen somewhat of a shaky pen lately. This one is past the dive of Dustin Baber. A single into right, DR will pump the brakes at second. And now the potential inning tying runs are aboard. And the powerful Dan Oberst in his fifth year as a banana comes up representing the go-ahead run. In fact, the inning winning run at that. And this is what is so tricky for Dylan Porter. These top three batters in the Bananas lineup are all batting 300 or better against him on the season. It's DR at 333, Deeb at 371, but Dan Oberst now up at the plate batting 452 on the season against the righty. That one yanked outside. Excellent play by Dalton Cornett to snag it. To mix in with that low 90s fastball, Dylan Porter adds a curveball slider and changeup. And now a quick 2-0 count on the Bananas designated hitter. Yeah, we're 
Mr. Oberst in his second tour. So 2021 Coastal Plain League champion with the Bananas in his third collegiate campaign. That fastball at 90 miles an hour, according to Trackman, gets the zone, and now a 2-1 count. And that is three straight fastballs from Dylan Porter to Dan Ober, so we may see him now try and go off speed. Meadows off of second. Malachi Mitchell has pinch run for Michael Vitamin D over at first. A third-year banana replacing a third-year banana. And now Porter has to find the zone in a dangerous count, or else we will see our first ball for sprint of the evening. John Byrne, our home plate umpire, with a big call early here. That one chopped to the left side. Bloomer will flip to second. It's wild into right field. Meadows scores easily. And Malachi Mitchell now 90 feet from being the inning tying run. And that is the pressure that Malachi Mitchell puts on the base pass when the Bananas insert him. A good move to have Malachi in to try and score that inning tying run. And boy, Bloomer was thinking he had the time if Michael Deeb was there to throw over and get that fielder's choice at second. But Malachi bolting near towards the bag. Bloomer just kind of hurried it and it got past Justin Baber. And now the party animals have to bring the infield in on the most powerful bat this tour has. 11 home runs for Eric Jones Jr. Dan Oberst is waiting between first and second and the party animals are going to let him steal his 39th bag in 44 attempts. Now the potential inning winning run in scoring position. And a 1-1 count on the former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer. Jones hitting 315, a 396 on base percentage. The Bananas tour leader in slugging at 549. And now ahead, two balls and a strike after the bender misses low and away. Heater gets the bottom of the zone to even it at two and two. Still no outs here in the bottom of the first inning. What a sweaty frame for Dylan Porter. Two singles and a two base error. And he goes power on power. Trackman had the fastball at 90 as it's fouled off. And it's really interesting. We've seen Dylan Porter across a couple of his last starts working pretty exclusively with Joe Lytle. Now with Dalton Cornette down, back behind the dish for him tonight. You wonder if that changes anything for Porter in his plan of attack as it's EJ lining this one up the middle and they will tie the inning as Tyler Gillum will give Dan Oberst the hold at third base. Smart move, still nobody out. No reason to risk it with the incredibly powerful arm of Jake Skoll in center field. And now you have the potential inning winning run 90 feet away for Dakota McFadden, whose 22 walk-offs are second best on the tour. I wouldn't doubt EJ runs here. He is being held on by Sam Claycamp. There he goes. The party animals will let him steal his sixth base in as many tries. As, by the way, the Bananas leader in ribeyes, now up to 45 on the tour. And that's just good strategy by Tyler Gillum, trying to get as many guys into scoring position as possible. So even if the party animals with the infield shifted in are able to throw it home on a ground ball and nail Dan Oberst, they've still got a man who could score with the very next batter as that one just went off the, the hand of a fan right near us. Nearly caught. Good attempt from the fan there. That is a good uh, reason for me to open the window. How about Dakota McFadden? Closes the window here on the first inning. The party animals plate two in the top half on the two run shot by Bryson Bloomer. But the Nanners respond with three of their own and claim the first point available here in the first ever banana ball game in Maine. And what a time for Dakota McFadden to pick up that knock after being hitless across his last two games. It's the Bananas who stage a big rally backing Cowboy Kyle and earning the first point of tonight's ball game. DMAC now up to 23 walk-offs on the tour, two behind Danny Hosley for the season high. Let's see why Reese Hampton was the showman of the night in the first ever banana ball game held in Massachusetts. It was an unbelievable performance, possibly a career game for Reese Hampton if you were to talk to him. We're gonna pick it up here in the sixth inning and it's Reese lining one into right field. 
That would bring in a run for Reese Hampton, and he would move up to second on that play. Look at these party animals dancing it up, man. They were loving it. And by the way, that's what got Josh and Biko a selfie with Jared Carabas. Now, <laughs> Dakota Albritton's up in the bottom of the sixth. And how about this? It's Reese behind the back getting the trick play against Stilt. One pitch from Brett Helton, one swing from Dakota Albritton, and one trick play from Reese Hampton. That's pretty good stuff. Once again, Reese getting in on the 3 2 2 with Brett. Something you love to see. And now coming back up again here in the eighth against Nolan Daniel. And on a 3 2 count, the Bananas outfield was starting to shade in for the ball four sprint. It's Reese able to get it over the head of Michael Deep for a double. And here is the signature Reese Hampton moment from this year's World Tour. 0 2 curveball, Danny Hosley and Reese does not miss it the first ever ball to leave the park in showdowns and reese and the party animals would claim the win over the bananas they never even got a chance to bat in showdowns it's great to see the jubilation on the party animals faces of course brett helton leading the charge who pitched throughout eight innings a couple evenings ago in brockton massachusetts and Hampton sends the bad boys of Banana Land home happy. Joe Lytle pokes that one out to left center, tracked down by Michael Deeb. Good cut. It was an 89 mile an hour fastball from Cowboy Kyle Lewis, and Trackman had that leaving Lytle's bat at 97. And Michael Deeb in left field was in a pretty good, uh, pretty good spot to catch that ball right off the bat from Joe Lytle. And rightly so, they know that Joe very good at driving that ball out to the opposite field. Deeb. Got a good first step and did not have to move that much to be able to make that grab. Now slamming Sammy Claycamp in his third world tour, his second with the party animals. With a 1-0 count on him, Jackson Olson has the 274th straight sold out Bananas crowd all clapping. And now he is going to flip. DR Meadows towards home plate. It's a bouncer in there, and Bill Leroy does all he can to put a body on it. Had no idea where that one was going, and it was fun until it ended up being about a, I'd say, 59 and a half foot pitch. I'm dying to see that again with an 0 2 or two strike count of any variety because I want a pyramid punch out. I'm all in for it. Ahead 2-0 in the count. Sammy Clay can't fist that one into center. And has the fourth hit of the night for the party animals. He's aboard with one away for Dustin Baber, the second baseman, residing in the nine hole. Remember, we hit 10 in Banana Land, so he can have a designated hitter and extra hitter. The DH works just as it does in baseball. The extra hitter can be swapped in defensively and out as much as you choose. Baber in his first world tour, made his Banana Land debut this past August in the Summer Series, and he is our donut hitter tonight. If he strikes out, then the full capacity crowd will be gifted free donuts courtesy of Duncan. And now Kyle does his best try at a 59 and a half foot pitch. And this is a pretty good donut batter from our friend Shark, Dustin Baber. Three strike counts across his last three games for the party animals. Front door slider just misses. Back-to-back 2-0 -back counts here. Lewis throws four-seam, two-seam, and cut fastballs. And the slider is really the weapon of choice as this one line to left, and it's going to bounce one hop off of Michael Vitamin Deeb's glove, who now takes a tumble in left. And that is going to be, we've said it a few times on the tour, one of the most bizarre doubles we've seen, Josh. I don't think that there's any other way to score that, and I think the reason you saw Michael Deeb slip there and left is because it's kind of been raining for most of the day here in Portland, Maine, and that surface probably still kind of slick out there in the outfield. I think that is a very good hypothesis. Another slider fired in low. And for the third straight batter, Cowboy Kyle Lewigs is behind in the count. Chase Acuff, the shortstop, 2021 Collegiate Banana in his first world tour here, made his banana ball debut alongside Dustin Baber in the summer series a year ago. In fact, tomorrow will be the 
one year anniversary of the first of six games of last year's summer series. And the Bananas and Party Animals debut on ESPN2. Big 2-2 two -two count. Coming here with one down and two Party Animals in scoring position. Ikuf pops a heater up into shallow center. DR Meadows underneath it. Clay Camp will deke towards home, but immediately slam the brakes. And that is a very big out for Mr. Lewis and company. Yeah, Chase Acuff, you could tell off the bat, would have liked that one to go deeper out into center field. And it was DR Meadows set up very comfortably to make a great throw home, and he did. And good work, Dakota McFadden, being there to cut it off and see if Clay Camp had possibly left the bag decided to retreat and try and snap a throw back to third for an inning ending double play. Cowboy Kyle still has two ducks on the pond and now has to face the best hitter on the tour. We're back at the top of the lineup for the party animals who now have their fourth straight advantageous count. Hampton lined out to right to begin the ball game. That one crushed out to right center. Hosley in pursuit, he looks up and watches it sail way out of here. Oh, baby, big slappy make Pappy happy. And Reese Hampton has his 10th ding dong on the tour. Technically, in a way, it's the 11th home run we've seen leave the park for Reese Hampton if you include the showdown home run from a game ago. But for Reese, swinging the bat so well, and no surprise as he is the party animal's leader in batting with runners in scoring position. And this is why you're seeing the party animal's offense rebound so well in this ball game. You saw at the bottom of this order feed the top, and Reese Hampton did not miss that pitch from Kyle Lewis. Dalton Cornett slams one off of the brick building that houses the main Red Claws. G League affiliate of the Boston Celtics. Who a couple years ago had fan favorite Taco Fall playing in there. Quick 2 count now on DC3, who bounced a base hit up the middle and came in to score on what I was going to say was pretty much a carbon copy situation for the first homer of the night for the party animals. Cornette rudely interrupts me as he is on his horse digging towards second. Good throw by Hosley but it is late, and Dalton Cornett has a baker's dozen two-baggers now on the season. And that was great hustle by Dalton Cornett as well. As soon as he saw that one line fair down the right field line, got on his horse digging for two, and for good reason, Danny Hosley with a great arm out there in right field as Cornett still had to slide into second base on that double. Tanner Thomas, the right fielder popped out to third his first time. If I can finally finish my point, if the bad boys of Banana Land will let me, both home runs were 1-0 counts and get me over sliders. Front door to Bryson Bloomer, back door to Reese Hampton. And the boys in black and pink are just far too good to leave cement mixer breaking balls over the middle of the plate. Boy, that foul ball nearly got Jesse Cole out there. It was not caught by fans, and he is apoplectic as he tries to teach them how they could get Cowboy Kyle out of this three-run top of the second inning. Heater fired high, and now deuces wild as Dalton Cornett leads off second. And you saw with that high pitch, Tanner not going after it. Looked like a little bit of frustration on the mound from Kyle Lewis. I think he just needs to take himself out of his head, bear down, and just remember, it's all about throwing strikes here in Banana Ball. Big payoff pitch coming after an 89 and 90 mile an hour fastball, both miss. The payoff, that one cranked. D.R. Meadows on his horse, turns his back to home plate. He can't get there. One hop off the wall, 400 feet from the dish, and Tanner Thomas, Kicking it into hyperdrive, sliding into third base with his third triple on the tour. And he has a season leading 50th RBI to boot. And that would make Tanner Thomas the first man in Banana Ball World Tour history to that 50 RBI plateau. We saw him and Jake Skull in a dead tie at 49 in Brockton, Massachusetts and entering tonight. It is Tanner Thomas who is finally getting in the record books for the party animals. He's one for two on the night. Cornette scores his second run. And Bryson Bloomer 
who had that monster 375-foot home run over the main monster, as they call it here in Hadlock Field. One of the many really fun bells and whistles that makes this park an incredible homage to Fenway. Chance for our fans to make a play here. They do not. You also got to see on the pair of home runs tonight, the lighthouse protruding out beyond the batter's eye. You'll only get a glimpse of it if we see another ball leave the park. Kyle now ahead of the Boomer one and two. And throwing that fastball past Bloomer, and Bloomer not offering a swing must feel like a win for Kyle Lewigs. Now look for that slider in the dirt, which he just threw and missed. Now the count at 2-2. Yeah, he wanted it to look a little more appetizing than that. Party Animals with four runs home and a potential fifth 90 feet away. But Heater gets the inside corner. Kyle goes back to the well to get his second strikeout of the night. A five hit and four run. Top of the second inning for the Party Animals who are looking to claim their first point this evening. We have a crowd sing off here in Hadlock Field as you get another look at the heater. Well placed on the inside corner. And let's get a check in on Larry the Brock Lobster who we submerged in water in our pregame festivities a couple of nights ago when we were in Brockton, Massachusetts. And it looks like that rapscallion has absorbed some of the water that we have made his ecosystem. Look, I was I was talking with Larry pregame. He seemed in pretty high spirits. Uh, <laughs> he feels at home amongst the other lobsters around Maine. And uh, I mean, look at him. You're getting a uh, little comparison next to that Kodak Polaroid camera <laughs> there. Uh, no free ads. No, not at all. But. I've got to tell you, I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation I've, I've had with Larry outside of uh, outside of these games, and boy, did he enjoy just getting to take in Portland, Maine yesterday. I wonder how many of the last five stops on the tour Larry Brock Lobster is going to get to enjoy. We play tonight and tomorrow here in the Forest City, as they call it. Not to be mixed up with Forest City, North Carolina, where Josh and I spent two very memorable nights a summer ago. And then we'll be out in Des Moines, Iowa next weekend. Back into Savannah for four games in five days, including round three against the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. And then on the schedule, the following weekend we'll be in Milwaukee to take on the Milwaukee Milkmen of the American Association who may have a conflict there as they are the best team in the American Association and are slated to host some playoff games. So that'll be interesting. We'll see if it stays the Milkmen or if the party animals end up hitching a ride out to Milwaukee. And then we'll finish up on September 14th in Syracuse, New York and September 16th in Cooperstown, New York, right around the corner from the Baseball Hall of Fame. You excited? Fired up. But we have to focus on the task at hand here. The Bananas need to put up a four spot in the second inning. Oh my gosh, that was the closest I've ever had in my life at a potential foul ball catch. I, what am I doing? I could have just stuck my hand out of the press box and I didn't do it. I realized it was coming right at us. And, and what did I do? I, I just, I took a seat back. <laughs> I'm opening my window because yeah, it's a pro move. I need I need this opportunity here. I'm I'm ready to make a snag. I boofed that. It'll be the highlight of my life if I can make it happen. Oh. This one tapped. You thought it was coming to you, Josh? What's going on? Dylan Porter's gonna handle the swinging bunt. I'm just like I'm speaking hypothetically. We're on the verge of history. Had I been able, or you, been able to catch that foul ball for an out, yes. that would have made us the 50th fan to catch a foul ball for an out. <laughs> and you realize that as Bill Leroy hit a dribbler to the left side. Yeah, I did, that, <laughs> that Josh sound effect was not because Bill Leroy dribbled the ball. It was the pain of missing out on history. How about that front door changeup? Came in at 76 miles an hour, according to TrackMan. 
Get strike one to Ryan Cox, and then her shortstop. And as the fastball misses up, and a 1 1 count on the Bananas leader in triples. Coxie up to 286 with the batting average, 344 on base percentage for the pride of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Spent time at St. Bonaventure and Kutztown Universities. Sends that one a mile high. His counterpart, Chase Acuff, will make the call in the catch for out number two. And that's what Ryan Cox does so well, is getting that ball lifted to the opposite field. But unfortunately, it was Dylan Porter able to get Coxie a little underneath that ball and a pop-up to Chase Acuff there. The odds are stacked against them. But if the Bananas would like to start a four-run rally, here is a great man to do it. Danny Hosley, the right fielder. His batting average up to 285, just one point behind Cox with a 396 on base percentage. Cranks that one foul, and it's gonna land on top of the main Red Claws facility over there. Hosley in his first world tour, pacing all hitters with his 25 walk-offs. Would have to hit a five-run homer here to make it 26. I don't think that's possible. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Banana ball 20-33, we'll figure it out. It is an ever-evolving game as Haas fouls off the 90-mile-an-hour heater. And has to either expect that change-up curveball or slider here on the 2-2. That one off the end of the bat. An easy, breezy, beautiful 1-2-3 frame for Dylan Porter. No, I spoke too early. Chase Acuff tries to grab it in his hat. It would have been the first hat catch since Ryan Cox did it in the noggin boss all the way back in Tampa at the end of April, and instead a trick play missed. Leaves the door ajar for the Nanners here in the bottom of the second. That was a very aggressive move from Chase Acuff, who I believe does not wear a hat most of the time. He's playing shortstop for the party animals, but it's the right situation to try that type of trick play, being up four in an inning and with two outs as well. We'll see if Jackson Olsen can pass the baton to Vinny DeRubius. The two Connecticut kids will have to reach base to allow D.R. Meadows to be the potential inning winning run. Uh, but the New Milford man will bounce it to first. Dustin Baber will bounce it back or check that. Bounce to second, Baber bounces it to first for his party animals leading 70th trick play on the season. And after the trick play missed, there's a trick play made from Dustin Baber. It's the party animals. We're starting that countdown. Two trick plays away from 200 as a team. And they tie the game at a point each as they skunk the Nanners, four runs to zip in the second. We'll throw it down to Maceo and the boys as we dance our way to the third. Incredible work, as per usual, by Maceo Harrison, the dancing first base coach, as he brought Christian Deerman, Malachi Mitchell, Nolan Daniel, DJ the Invader, and Alex Ziegler into his fold here in the first ever game played in the Pine Tree State. We come to you live from Portland, Maine, and Hatlock Field, which has been standing here since 1994, in fact, was named after Edson Hadlock because this was the Portland High School baseball field before it. Still is, but they have added a whole lot of bells and whistles and about 7,000 plus seats 
since it was just a baseball field and that was a wild ricochet. I think our first base camera woman, Emerson Elmgren, just got that off the back of the head on the rebound, but she is the iron horse of BTV for a reason. This is over 160 straight broadcasts that she has worked and she will not miss a pitch here. That's just incredible toughness. You don't get that nickname for no reason. No. It's five, six, seven for the party animals here. Jake Skoll had a double and was stranded on second in the first. Garrett Delano and Joe Lytle both waiting in the wings. And now a two ball, two strike count as Cowboy Kyle Lewig's out for his third inning of work. Beautiful slider down and in and gets Skull for his third strikeout of the night. Cowboy Kyle will handstand to celebrate and Bill Leroy will floss. What's new? And it kind of seems like Kyle Lewis threw Jake Skull more fastballs than a lot of guys have been doing lately, but Kyle still able to get the punch out with the breaking ball there. And for Jake Skull, that strikeout rate just continues to climb. That's now 24 strikeouts per skull over his last 20 games, which has almost doubled his season total in that span. Peter gets a strike to Garrett Delano. Bill Leroy was laying down for it. To the delight of the full capacity crowd here in Hadlock Field. And now Kyle bringing in Cox, Jones, and Meadows for a choreographed dance on the 0-1. That ball blasted out to left. Michael D perched underneath it, gets rid of his glove. Oh, and he catches it on the rebound. A fantastic trick play from Vitamin D, his seventh on the season. Oh, what a beautiful recovery from Michael Deep doing a little boogie there as he celebrates that <laughs> trick play. Boy, Kyle's heart had to have sunk right there in that moment. But there's got to be so much delight after Deep was able to come up with that juggling snag. Wow! Bounce off the left and corralled it with the right. And now the B-52s get some love here. It's an Athens band. Go dogs! Of course, Rock Lobster, one of the most bizarre and incredible songs to ever have been released to the world. And the party animals with a bizarre and incredible dance to boot. Remind me to tell you a Rock Lobster story later tonight. Okay. <laughs> Off or on the air? Off. <laughs> I'm incredibly excited. 1-0 count on Joe Lytle as Bill Leroy will crawl between his legs. Lukes gave up two runs in the first inning on the Bryson Bloomer two-run shot. Four runs in the second. Three of them on the Reese Hampton tater tot. And now looking for a one, two, three, top of the third, where once again, with the beauty of banana ball, he'll set his nanners up with a chance to take the lead in the all-important points category if they can just get one run. Can't get ahead of ourselves, though, because a 3-1 count here on Joe Lytle, who lined out to deep left his first time. And we'll take a sprint. All seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before it's live. The Nanners get it around the infield quickly. The play at second in time. Reggie Liggins makes the call. Funky attempt by Lytle trying to evade the tag of Michael Deeb. But it is a 1-2-3 inning in a roundabout way. From the viewpoint up here in the booth, it was really surprising that Joe took that aggressive turn and moved towards second base. The Bananas infield crashed in very well, and the way that Meadows, Deeb, and Danny Hosley have been able to bat that ball so quickly between them and get it to usually Deeb to apply that tag is so impressive. That was the key in getting Joe Idle out there and getting Kyle out of the inning in three minutes and 14 seconds. It's a one sprint in the book it ends the top of the third and as I prophesized the Nanners just need one run to win the inning let's throw it down to Jesse Cole to check in on our, our, our kiss off this Christy. evening Christy Jason Christy and Jason how many years have you guys been married 15 15 years not bad what do you guys got 
Oh, all right. They still got the love a little bit, a little bit. And your name? Susan. Susan? Craig. Craig, and how many years have you guys been married? 45. 45 years. All right, let's see what you got. <laughs> All right, guys, guys, this is a family environment. What is <laughs> Family environment. All right, all right, all right. Break it up. We're good. We're good. All right, fans, I'll let you be the judge. Was it our first couple here? <laughs> was it our second couple here in 15 years? Or was it our amazing couple 45 years? That's how you do it. Now go get a room. All right, there you have it. It is a kiss off. The kiss off always a delight. The New Englanders did not disappoint. And now we see the bottom of the bananas lineup trying to feed the top and retake a lead that they owned after the first inning and was erased after the second. 10 1 and 2. Vinny Derubius blasts this one out to center. A 90 mile an hour fastball hit 90 miles off the bat, according to Trackman. And Jake Skoll will clean it up for out number one. Yeah, and good wood by Vinny Derubius driving that one out to center field. But Jake Skull in the right spot to be able to snag that one. And for Vinny, now 0 for his last five after going hitless in his last start in Hartford. And he had a pair of deep flyouts to center field in his home state banana ball debut on Monday night as well. Put that one down the line where it's 315 feet and it could sneak over the 37-foot main monster. DR Meadows just wants to dance with somebody, and son of a gun, look at him. He did get to dance with somebody. But we've seen we've seen this guy not only conquer some uh, some square dancing, some two steps up to the plate, but now now getting in on this. Holy cow! We're making dreams come true in Banana Land. The doctor singled and scored in the first. And is ahead of ball and no strikes as he falls out of the batter's box, which will not be a strike called on him by John Byrne, who is making his banana ball home plate umpiring debut. A guy who was an umpire in minor league baseball for over a decade, has even called a few major league baseball games. And the potential inning winning run aboard, David Ray Meadows, two for two. And just continues to hit the ball so well. When we look at WRC Plus for DR Meadows, which takes into account WOBA, which is a weighted on-base average, the different ways that you can get on base, and they all have different weights, DR Meadows is the second most valuable player in banana ball with a 149 WRC Plus mark only behind that of Reese Hampton. Takes off for second, and he steals it. He's now 37 for 44 in his stolen base attempts. And Michael Vitamin Deeb with 21 walk-offs here in 2023. Last year's World Tour walk-off leader with five in 12 games has the inning winning run in scoring position. Deep singled to right field his first time. Now has a 1-1 count on him as that one just misses. Ranks that foul, one and two. Porter, the pride of Piedmont High School. Going after Deeb, who comes, the, comes from the behemoth of a high school out of American heritage. She has D1 athletes and pros galore representing it as alumni. Huge 2-2 pitch coming. And Dylan Porter will take his time. And that one spoiled and out of Hadlock Field. Still 2-2. Michael Deep kind of at the last second decided to swing at that breaking ball from Dylan Porter. Good job spoiling it, even though I think it was a little up in the zone there. Now Deep awaits another 2-2 count. 
And spoils another offering. We'll have a third 2-2 pitch coming to the 2018 MVP of the Empire Professional Baseball League. And this is another great battle for number seven. And Deeb, of course, three walk-offs in his last six games for the Bananas and one of the top three guys when you talk about batting average with runners in scoring position. Gives it a ride, but not deep enough to do any damage. Hampton lackadaisically will haul it in for out number two. And the fate of the inning rests in the mighty hands of Dan the Man Oberst. Looked like Deeb was trying to take one out of Big Poppy's book there, playing a little wall ball with the monster in left, just didn't have quite enough chutzpah on it. And now Oberst, who scored the inning winning run in the first after reaching on an E5 and stealing second base, could win the third. And Dan with back-to-back -back doubles in the last two games is gonna line this one out to right field, but Tanner Thomas able to come in and nestle under that one. And we are scoreless here in the third, still one point apiece in this ball game. It was a bit of an adventure for Mr. Tinder Thomas, but he got the job done once he found his footing. And as we head to the fourth inning, tied at one, let's get a little Bananalytics action. Let's break down some batting average by innings, Mr. Tulevsky. Yeah, we haven't broken down this data as much as we'd like to. And look, <laughs> I did not like the title of this PowerPoint. So this is a banana ball batting average by inning, a rope of sand. Right. So I, I hope you'll enjoy it. We're going to look at the bananas offensive data by inning. You can see the bananas best offensive innings. They're batting 352 in the first, 340 in the ninth, and 332 in the second. So it doesn't surprise you. The bananas rally in the first. A big reason why they're batting 352 on the season. But they struggle in the fifth, seventh, and third innings of play. As you could see just there, they were not able to drive in that run there in the third. Now, when we flip to the party animals side of the equation, the party animals also at their best in the first inning. And what did they do? Scored two runs themselves. They also do really well in the fifth and seventh. And we've talked about it all season long. That ninth inning for the party animals has been a real killer. But surprisingly, despite the fact that they've struggled in the second, they put across that four spot here to claim a point. And now, let's draw some conclusions from what this data is telling us, of course. Well, the single inning scoring probability is the highest between both teams in the first inning. So you'd expect one of the two squads to come away with a point after that initial frame. Even though the party animals put up two, it was the bananas with those three runs getting the point. The bananas point probability significantly higher in the second. That didn't happen tonight, but we'll see if maybe they can take the seventh, which is when the party animals are really likely to earn a point. And overall, when we look at those ninth inning splits, we can come to the conclusion that the Bananas have been a more clutch team overall on this year's tour because every run is counting for a point in the ninth inning. And you have seen that play out. The Bananas lead the tour by five games, even though both teams are hitting 299. The Party Animals only have an on-base percentage, two points better than the Nanners and their slugging percentage as a team is only five points better. So they have been slightly better hitters, but the Bananas have done it when it matters most, when every run counts as a point in the ninth inning. And of course, they don't have to face the greatest pitching weapon on the tour, Mr. Danny Hosley. Now, the greatest dancing weapon in Banana Land, Vincent Chapman, humping on the bases tonight and gets to do his emphatic dance right in the middle of it all next to the mound. An absolute blast. Vincent started the ball game umpiring down the first baseline. He now trades spots with Reggie Ligon so that the folks on the third base side could get some Vincent love. Sip Claycamp lifts that one into right center. Hosley takes control. And Slam and Sammy now one for two after singling his first time. You might think it's pure happenstance that Vince is out there at third base, but I think it's just because they want everybody to compare him to the mini monster behind him. <laughs> that is an astute observation. Dustin Baber doubled his first time. Just like Clay Kim. Came around to score one of the four runs the party animals plated in the second frame. He's our donut hitter tonight, and for the second time, he denies the great fans of Portland, Maine, free donuts. That was 
A good poke by the party animal second baseman on an 89 mile an hour fastball. Trackman had it leaving his bat at 94, although it's out number two. And it feels like Dustin Baber is starting to see the ball better and better. He had the double in the last game, got on base with a less than normal double tonight. And after that liner, you get the feeling he could get red hot at the bottom of the order for the party animals very soon. Danny Do It All has grabbed the first two outs in this inning. Kyle Lewig's looking for his second straight one, two, three inning, and he's one strike away from it. He got a cuff to fly to shallow center his first time, and with the advantage in the count, Cowboy Kyle is going to attempt a 120 foot pitch. The last time he tried to pull it off, it was hit for a home run by Mr. Edelman of the Staten Island Ferry Hawks a week ago. That one gets the outside corner. Nasty two seam fastball. And it is the fourth K of the night for Cowboy Kyle. What an unbelievable pitch there from Kyle Lewis and his backstop, Bill Leroy, knew the second that one came in that that was a called strike three, and it's Kyle Lewis getting out of the fourth inning in under two minutes. That was a one minute and 29 second inning for Cowboy Kyle. Boy, you saw him throwing some masterful sliders early on the tour from about 100 feet away from home, but boy, has he pulled off that frisbee of a backdoor two-seam fastball that freezes Chase Acuff, who is a tough cookie to set down on strikes. That was only his 18th K compared to 17 ball four sprints he's earned on the tour. And just to make matters even more incredible, Acuff was the hardest man to strike out in Division II baseball in 2018 when he was at Eckerd. I mean, this is not a guy who punches out easily. I think it's one of those situations where for Acuff as a batter, he was telling himself, you know, I'm probably going to be taking all the way on this pitch, really not expecting at all that Kyle could land that pitch so close to the zone. And for Acuff, an unfortunate outcome, but very good for Kyle Lewis again, considering that MPI mark. Thanks to Joe Lytle ending the third inning with the one base sprint in which he was thrown out trying to get to sick in, in a roundabout way. Kyle Lewis has really settled in and retired seven straight party animals now. And you're seeing him throw with some conviction and some confidence again, which you love to see from Kyle. Really good question from the fans in the chat. They are wondering if that is a trick play for Cowboy Kyle. We have not ruled it that way in the past. No, it's a trick pitch, but it cannot be, I think, a trick play. Otherwise, I mean, you'd be giving Matt Wolf a million trick plays for every single pitch he's firing on the mound. That is a well-reasoned retort. We hey baby our way into the bottom of the fourth. You are watching game 75 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by Zappos. The 105th Banana Ball game played all time. And for the second straight frame here, Dylan Porter has to keep the bananas off the board if he wants to preserve the point apiece tie. It's the beef of the bananas lineup here, four, five, and six. EJ Dmac and Mr. Leroy due to swing it. One one count on Eric Jones Jr., whose RBI single tied the first inning in his first trip to the dish. And for Dylan Porter, he should be feeling very confident on the mound right now after having EJ kind of tied up with that first pitch breaking ball. But EJ did a very good job checking his swing on that 1-0 pitch from Porter as it's now Porter falling behind 3-1 and one on Jones Jr. EJ, the Seattle Mariners bullpen catcher last year. And he will take a five pitch sprint Party animals get it around the infield with lightning speed. Jones will about face and head back to first, which was the right decision. The party animals have really picked up the speed on their sprint defense as of late. He would have been a dead duck at second. There is something about some of the practice they did before traveling up for this northeast leg of the tour as they have been able to nail quite a few base runners and be able to keep a majority of base runners at first base with the way especially their outfielders, Thomas Skull and Hampton, have been able to crash in there at second base. Malachi Mitchell pinch runs for the second time tonight. He is the automatic runner for the Nanners, so he can pinch run one time every time through the order he takes off on the first pitch and the throw from Cornette never had a chance that one 
stolen on Mr. Porter. And Flash the Kid in his third world tour now has his season leading 67th steal in 73 tries. And he's trying to become the first player in banana ball history to reach 80 runs scored on the tour. We'll see if it can be Dakota McFadden playing hero and making that happen for Flash. DMAC won the first inning with his line drive single that scored Danny Oberst. Bounces that one to third. Acuff will only have one play. It's at first. He thought about trying to grab Flash the Kid, but it would have been bang, bang, and he will settle for the sure out. Yeah, with the jump that Malachi got, with that one coming off the bat of Dakota McFadden, Chase Acuff would have really had to hurry a throw there. There's no guarantee that you get Flash there, and also, when you hurry those throws, more likely to make an error in that situation, and that's not one where Chase Acuff was willing to have that ball get away from Bryson Bloomer and lead to a run scoring for the Bananas via that way. The immaculate crowd that makes up the 274th straight sold out Bananas game, all clapping along as Bill Leroy comes up to the plate. He actually is one of the top three Bananas in OPS here in August. Surprising for the defense first catcher, who has been no slouch with his overall stats. He's now hitting 277, a 373 OBP but has never been known for his pop. Just one home run and nine doubles on the tour. Yeah, but he has six extra base hits since the 3rd of July, and he had four through the, uh, through the first, uh, through all the parts of the tour before then for Bill. And I'm telling you, he only trails DR Meadows and Danny Hosley, and it really seems to be that leg kick that has proved to work wonders for him as Tanner Thomas is going to just let this one fall into right field, and that'll be a walk-off for Bill Leroy and the Bananas here in the fourth. They're up to a two points to one lead. It'll go down in the book as his 10th two-bagger on the tour. It wins the fourth, and all of a sudden, they have doubled up the party animals two points to one. And what a celebration at the plate. I don't get the reference, but I love whatever just happened. Bill grabs his 13th walk off on the season and his 25th stake. We head to the fifth inning with the Nanners up by a point and Cowboy Kyle will be back out there on the bump. Let's throw it down to the young professor. It's a brand new promotion we're calling the back to school race. Well, a new take on the soccer mom race, and <laughs> as per usual, there is a big crash at the end. We will check on all the participants, and while we prepare ourselves for the fifth inning, let's pop up in the broadcast booth because we have a very special guest up here, one of the legends of the New England broadcasting world, Mr. Tom Karen of Nesson. Guys, how you doing? Oh my Welcome God. to New England. 
thank you for having us. Can you run us through your four innings of a banana ball experience? I've tonight? seen two walk-offs already. I mean, when are you going to do that in a game? Uh, I, I got to say, horrible fielding by the fans. I think <laughs> it's a fielding percentage of zero so far. Yeah. Nothing's come over to my section yet. We'll be on top of that. We, this is amazing. It is so much fun. I, You know, I do the games on Nesson, and when there's a rain delay, we have to talk, and I hate rain delays, but you guys actually made a rain delay fun. So well done. Oh, that warms the heart to hear. Tom is nearly into three decades now at Nesson. Boy, the time flies, huh? Yeah. Some days, yes. Some days, rain delays, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be five, six, seven for the party animals here with Cowboy Kyle back out on the bump. Jake Skoll. Actually, check that. We're right at the top of the order. What am I talking about? I'm just so enamored by our new guest in the booth as Reese Hampton grabs his second hit of the night. Three-run homer in the second inning was quite a blast out to right center. It really was. I got to ask you guys, though. This is a slow-moving game for you, right? We're past the hour mark. Top of the fifth. I mean, it's picked up a little bit, but that clock is the greatest thing I've ever seen in baseball. <laughs> because I would just love that. I know I'm, I'm, the postgame show is coming on after two hours, right? You jump to the final inning whenever you get to the end of that clock. I love that. For us in the business, it is really, really amazing. Dalton Cornett with a laser beam down the right field line. Hampton stepping on the burners will pump the brakes at third base as the ball dribbles away and will be grabbed by Bill Leroy. Flipping over to third, and Reese Hampton's out! What a snazzy play by the six-year banana. Huge first out here in the top of the fifth. Wow, there's a lot to break down here. First of all, that was about a carbon copy double from Dalton Cornett earlier in the game. And with that throw coming in, good job by Leroy being able to get in front of that ball. It was Kyle Lewigs moving towards the mound to make sure he was there in case Hampton tried to go home. But Bill caught Reese. Reese Hampton napping there at third base and Jackson Olsen staying bare by the bag was able to apply that tag. That is such a great heads up play by Leroy and the Bananas third baseman. Now it'll be Tanner Thomas who is plunked on the toe. Third time that the party animals right fielder has been hit by a pitch on the tour and he will begrudgingly take his base. Kind of had a screen set up. The third base coach was almost set up as the screen. He didn't see the flip coming. Yeah. I thought that might be a challenge. I thought the party animals might come upstairs. Now you guys actually get the final say on that. It's one of the coolest things that has ever happened in our careers. <laughs> thanks to... It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, thanks to an absolutely chaotic ending to a game in Tulsa, Oklahoma that gave the party animals the great Sooner State. We instituted challenges here in Banana Ball and... Josh and I get to be the czars of it all. It's really quite unique. It is the adrenaline, adrenaline rush I never knew I needed. <laughs> <laughs> and both teams looking up at you the whole time, waiting to see? Correct. Bryson Bloomer taps that one to the left side. Jackson Olsen can't grab it. It'll be in E5 as Cornette gets third and Thomas up to second. And now the base is juiced for Jake Skull. Now you guys had Johnny time. Damon out here the other night, right? Correct. It's the second time Damon has suited up as a banana. The first was back in Daytona. Second stop on the tour for anybody keeping track at home. This is now stop 29. So it had been a minute. And then, of course, he also played against the bananas, representing the Kansas City Royals on March 11th. He said he didn't want to alienate the Red Sox or Yankees fans out there as Skull blasts that one foul down the right field line. The, the former players I've talked to who have been part of this absolutely love it. Shane Victorino and Jonathan Papelbon, and of course Bill Lee, who, who dropped dead in the bullpen, <laughs> Correct. But, but came back to life and threw again the next day. Naturally. Said he'd always, he always expected to die at a ballpark, just not in the bullpen. <laughs> yeah, which is where he collapsed 364 days ago. It was actually August 19th last year. The scariest moment of my young broadcasting career. <laughs> yeah, that's not one you want to have to fill. But again, Billy has at least eight lives left, I have no doubt. <laughs> yeah, the Red Sox Hall of Famer has been a blast to have around. Huge moment here. The banana's up a point, but the party animal's looking to put a crooked number up as that ball sails out of the stadium. And now a one-two count on Jake Skull. So when you, you list the laundry list of former Red Sox, who have played for the Bananas. Have you have you gotten any great stories in particular out of them? You know, no lie, Jonathan Papelbon, and I was telling Jesse this before the game, Jonathan Papelbon, who's on our show, he does our post-game show with me, was telling me, like, he was disillusioned, hated baseball, was done with it, thought he had given his best to it, and he was walking away. 
and when he came back with you guys last year, wearing the kilt, bringing the trophy out, doing the river dance before his pitch, <laughs> uh, he said, I realized how much I love playing the sport. The Savannah Bananas reconnected with baseball. He said, I would not be on Nesson today if I didn't play that game with the Bananas last year. So that's how much this means to some of these guys as you bring them back onto the field and get them engaged with the sport again. Well, that is music to our ears. It absolutely fires us up. That was a uh, huge K for Cowboy Kyle, who gets skull swinging on a back foot slider for the second time tonight. And now Garrett Delano will swing it with two down and the bag still full. A strikeout and fly out on the evening for the Party Animals extra hitter. And you could also see just how thrilled Bill Leroy, the catcher, was calling that slider there from Kyle, getting the swing and miss from Jake Skull. And now Delano skying this one out to center field. Oh. D.R. Meadows with the backflip catch and the base is loaded. Are you kidding me? Gets Kyle out of the fifth. The doctor never disappoints. It's his 36th trick play in 40 tries and probably the boldest of them all. What a catch. But the base is loaded, are you kidding me? He has the full capacity crowd here in Hadlock Field jumping. So does the free merchandise that is being hurled in their general direction, it also helps. Now TC, as you think back on, as I mentioned, close to now three decades working for Nesson and all the incredible Red Sox that you've seen, are there any former Boston Red Sox who you think should be showcased on the banana so ball field. So we need to, and I'm talking to him a week from Monday, okay? We need to figure out a way to get David Ortiz on the field for a bananas game. Uh, and, and, and Manny Ramirez feels like he would be a natural, but David Ortiz, larger than life as he is, the, the large father, big poppy, would be absolutely perfect, wouldn't he? I couldn't agree more. I, I think any way we can get Ramirez to emulate the cutoff in left field for the bananas is a is a, see, is a, a winner in my book. Johnny David. Yeah, wait, 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 a couple years ago, we had Manny on, and I was asking him, "What were you thinking?" He's like, "I was just thinking Johnny didn't have a good arm. I was just trying to help him out." Johnny didn't love that answer. Oh man, that would be a great yeah. Recreate that in left field. That could be your first pitch. You could relay it in. Johnny to Manny to the mound and throw the first pitch. We're pitching that. There you go. I'm not even joking. Do we it. will pitch that. You have a mind for <laughs> Banana Land, Tom. I mean, that was just pure genius coming in your first trip to the booth here. What I love about it, years ago, I started here in Portland, Maine. Right. And, and years ago, I was with the hockey team here. And we did all these crazy things around it. You know, we had a dynamite lady, this woman who got in a box of dynamite and blew herself up. I've heard her. Oh, wow. <laughs> just incredible stuff. But you, the one thing we always used to joke about is like, you can't touch the product. You can't, once the game starts, you got to get back to normalcy. You guys don't, it's the best. Yeah, that is the beauty of Banana Ball. And we're taking pictures with the crowd. Uh, naturally. That is catch also. Catch a foul ball. <laughs> Make a catch. You guys taking pictures here. We need somebody to make a catch. That's a fact. Tom, would you like to wager a guess as to how many fans have caught foul balls on our world tour this so season? So how many cities? How many games have you played? This is our 75th game in our 29th city. So you've played 74 games. Yes. And you're asking how many catches have been made? Yes. Nice piece I of hitting there by Ryan Cox. Is that a, a walk-off? Nope. It's a base knock. It's They're base celebrating knock. celebrating oh. like it is a walk-off. <laughs> All right. I was like, I thought I missed something, but no, they're just chasing him in right field. They're going to do a little Lambo the leap. There yeah. you go. The, the Hadlock leap. <laughs> yeah. The Hadlock hop. Right? Hey. There you oh. go. Trademark it right now. Amazing. The Hadlock hop. Use it tomorrow night. You're back here. <laughs> That's why uh, I, I'm going to guess one a game? 74? Going to guess 74. Yeah. We have actually had 49 fans catch foul balls 49. for outs, which means we're on the precipice of history tonight if a fan catches a ball. It'll be the 50. The big 5-0. That'll be, yeah, that's a, and that's a moment they should be honored. That fan should, you know, have their fandom retired, whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I get what you're Here saying, goes in the rafters Correct. Or something. We get their signature on the ball, yeah, put it up in the Bananas Hall I of like Fame. It. There it is. Have you guys ever caught one? We've never had the opportunity. But boy, we've had a couple close ones yeah. tonight. We had our closest uh, call of the season tonight. Co correct, tonight. no doubt. About four feet below us. And it would count. It would count because yeah. our job description as the broadcast entertainers are the most knowledgeable fans in Banana Land. So there you are, you are fans. 
So, so this must be just so fun taking it on the road. I mean, Savannah's a great town. Been to Savannah. It is a great city. And Amazing. My wife's actually a little, little upset that we're here tonight because she wanted me to take her to Savannah to see them. So we'll have to do that next year. I said, we're going to a Bananas game. She was like, that's awesome. When are we going to Savannah's? Well, no, we're just going to drive up to Portland. Actually, Banana Ball came to you. Uh, that's a strikeout for Danny Hosley. He is 0 for 2 on the night. And that is the first punch out for Dylan Porter, as now Jackson Olsen, who bounced into a trick play from Dustin Baber at second. His first time will swing it. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's mind boggling. I'm a New Yorker, so I've been up and down the Eastern seaboard. Oh, baby! Jackson Olsen blasted out to right. Sayonara! Fifth inning winner. Olsen's fifth bomb of the tour. Nader's up three points to one. And this comes in only his fourth start since coming back from injury. Olsen had the RBI walk up double in the last game in the eighth inning. And now blasts the home run out of the park and puts the bananas up another point in this ball game. He mashed that. I think it was halfway up that uh, pavilion section over there in right field. It's been a bit of a home run derby tonight. Five innings in the books and three tater tots thus far. Good blasts from the boys. We now get a TikTok dancing promotion with Noah Bridges. So we'll see if these fans can keep up with our TikTok the superstar. Here. Split has joined Split us. Split is in the building. And you get a replay of the big bat smash on home plate from Mr. Jackson Olsen. All right, now I need a selfie with Split. That's a fact. Oh, the phone went phone flying. Went down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not going well. I'm glad you're on the field right now. All right, let's try this get Split. Oh, yeah. No one's going in the Bananas Hall of Fame. Okay, we have our first contestant down here. We'll see if they've there done any go. practice. You have run, any broad camera now? You have any TikTok Fine. dances in your arsenal, Tom? Absolutely not. Can you show me one? No, I also do not. How about you? Split. You got a TikTok? Quick, quick little TikTok dance for me? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you got an undershirt. I got a shirt underneath. That's it. He left. That's all I got. <laughs> no words. It's really tough to figure out what's going on with him. Okay, so we're one contestant in the books. And this is the madness and beauty and bedlam of Banana Ball, is you could be mid-story, you could be painting the picture of an inning, and all of a sudden, home run, inning's over. Inning's over, TikTok dance breaks out. Correct. Now the young, young professor? Correct. The energy is off the charts. Amazing. I, Michael Buffer's got nothing on him. I've been watching him run around all night. It's hard to, he's hard to miss with the... Uh, Gold Lame sequin thing going there. Uh, but he is, he's a lot of fun uh, to watch as an announcer, just to watch him carry out the energy. This whole thing is just a, uh, it, it's, the visual is nonstop. Like, my wife's elbowing me and pointing over there. Fans behind us are screaming and pointing over there. There's a double rainbow. I don't know if you guys could see that from up here, but <laughs> over the right field side, there was actually a rainbow. She's like, how did they pull that off? I was like, I don't know. They think of everything. <laughs> Banana Land Magic. Banana Land Magic. Now, has there been anything that, since you've been here taking everything in, that you weren't quite expecting that you're kind of surprised by, pleasantly surprised by? Uh, the baby tackling the other baby was a bit surprising. Yeah, the baby <laughs> race and, and one, I, I don't know if you guys were showing that. I assume you were. We were. It, one, one seemed to have the clear lead, and the other one just took a 90-degree turn and absolutely tackled the other baby. I didn't <laughs> see that coming. It's back-to-back -back games with an interference, believe it or right? not. Yeah, I can't believe it. He keeps stats on everything. I, I try. That's, that's, you know, modern analytics. He is the statistical savant of Banana Land. <laughs> we enter into the sixth inning, and you talked about, you know, worried about the big clock out in right center that's now ticking about 44 and a half minutes left. You can be worried about the pace, and then all of a sudden you get a two-run homer that cuts an inning short. You kind of right. make up some it's, time. It's a great idea. I absolutely love it. Well, now we got a dance going on. Correct. That's actually one I could have pulled off. That's the jerk as Joe Lytle sends that one out to right center. Hosley and Meadows converging. It is Hosley to make the catch for out number one as Lytle is 0 for 2 on the night. You know, you asked what surprised me, and we were talking about this in the second inning or so down with some, some fans around us, they can play baseball. I mean, that's you know what I mean? I think a lot of people come here expecting the circus, not expecting the baseball. These guys can play. You know, you wouldn't be out here. You would, I don't care, you know, what the pitch is. If you're mashing one eight rows up there, 
like he just did to walk it off. And Ryan Cox oh. going between the legs. That is our trick play king, notching his 123rd of the tour. Jesse Cole, what do you got? And boy, are we happy to have TC in the booth for this because all 10 feet and nine inches of Dakota Stilts Albrighton is going to take over on the bump. How does he pitch down the mound? I cannot imagine. It's taken a lot of practice. Like, I've seen the video of him at the plate, and I kind of get that. It's a big strike zone, but but you can overcome that. Uh, but, but, I mean, not on stilts. If you haven't thrown off a mound, people find it very difficult yes. to throw. You know, when, you, when you've got someone coming out to do a ceremonial first pitch, the downhill step always throws them off. We have, so, and, and just adding to that point, we've had Kevin Euclidus and Dustin Pedroia, as well as CeCe Sabathia, all throw first pitches that count for a ball and a right. strike. None of them have been close to the zone. All right, Kevin Euclidus on our air last week still has a beef. He says he hit the corner. He <laughs> strongly believes it was a strike and that it was a uh, brutal call. He said they should have used the replay <laughs> on his ceremonial first pitch. Wow, that's that's an idea right there. Let the fan challenge, uh, let right the fan challenge eat on the first pitch that counts. You can't take it home. Okay, so maybe Uke wasn't completely uh, horrendous with his first pitch, but Pedroia and Cece were nowhere in the vicinity of the strike zone. And these are, Pedroia will absolutely tell you it's because there was something with the mound. <laughs> I have no doubt it was the mound's fault. Yeah, I'll have to talk to the folks at Scottsdale, Arizona about that one. Uh, Dustin Baber in the nine hole, the second baseman, a double and a line out tonight. Both balls struck well, ready for a 3-0, and he is a four-pitch sprint. So after we just absolutely wax poetic about Dakota Stilts all Britain and his pitching prowess on the mound, he throws four straight bad ones, and the party animals have a man aboard. What's the horizontal break on those pitches? I mean, um, I just, you know. <laughs> That's a great question for TrackMan. I, uh, I don't have the processing capabilities to quite read that. TrackMan had the last two pitches at 10 inches and 13 inches of horizontal break, All which right. well, seems like it's go. underselling it. <laughs> but coming from the high angle. That's what I'm thinking. It can't look good as the, well, he just, the, the batter just got hit, so. Correct, Acuff plunked for the ninth time on the tour, second most in Banana Land. And he has the help of his teammates to go down the first base line. So to the top of the order we go, and one of the most talented men playing our young sport, Reese Hampton, two for three tonight, a three-run homer and a single for the former Detroit Tigers and Arizona Diamondbacks minor leaguer. Sprays that one to short, Ryan Cox. Glove flip over to third, it's wild. Baber now coming home, and Jackson Olsid can't ascertain the banana ball. So the Nanners give the party animals a run here in the top of the sixth. Yeah, an unfortunate outcome there for the Bananas. It was Ryan Cox who was trying for the trick play and using the momentum as he was getting that ball and going towards third base, but it was Jackson Olsen a little bit surprised that Coxie was going over to him. That ball gets away and the party animals able to dance it up after scoring that run off a very cross stilts. <laughs> But then Stiltz jumps in with the dance at the end. I mean, he might be cross, but he's not going to miss an opportunity to uh, join the dance party. Yeah, you have to have a sense of humor if you want to pursue, pursue a career in banana ball. Yeah, who else? Uh, Jake Peavy, another former Red Sox, who I think was one of your first, uh, one of the first players, right? When you first road tour, first Correct. world tour, when but, it was a one city world tour? Right, so he was uh, an honorary coach in his hometown of Mobile, Alabama back in 2021 on the one city world tour as DR Meadows will grab this for out number three and keep it at just one run for the party animals here in the top of the sixth. And then with Bill Lee being uh, a, a member of the actual roster last year, Jake Peavy was our first uh, professional guest to join in. So he told me that his son had so much fun. His son sort of redeveloped his love of the game. And that's, again, just a great story. Uh, it fires us up. We will be back with TC in the booth in a second. Now we get to chat with Jesse Cole, the owner of this whole operation, the man in the yellow tux. Jesse, we're coming off the first ever banana ball game in your home state of Massachusetts. And now we've got a packed park in Maine. You must be having a blast, man. You know, it's special here in New England. I've you know been around.
game here for many years, and the people here understand baseball. They get baseball, and to see them getting banana ball and so fired up and watching the trick plays, it's pretty exciting. Now, I know you like to dream big, but I don't think you ever could have imagined a banana ball game where Johnny Damon had a walk-off hit, where Doug Flutie got a party animal to pop out to a fan, and then it ended with the first ever out-of-the-park walk-off homer in showdowns. It was wild. I mean, to get a text from Doug Flutie that I'd love to play for you guys, I'm like, what? You know, and the same thing with Johnny Damon. I mean, obviously, Johnny's been with us a few times. But, yeah, I mean, it, we've had so many Red Sox with us, guys that I, I grew up watching, and it's been uh, amazing to see that these guys want to keep coming out and playing and having fun. And I think that's what's about the great thing about banana ball. It brings out the best of people and why we started playing a game as a kid. How about the home run party so far tonight? Reese Hampton, Bryson Bloomer, and Jackson Olsen all getting in on the fun, and the ball is flying in Portland. This is a great, great banana ball ballpark right here. The home runs, the trick plays. I mean, seven runs in the first inning, and it's wild. And now, you know, potentially a one-run game. And, again, that's what makes this game special. Well, you were a bat boy in Fenway Park. You also got to pitch in Fenway Park when you were throwing for Wofford. And now we have a 37-foot main monster out and left. How cool is it? to get to have that in this banana ball it, arena. It's special. And, you know, our goal is to go to Fenway Park at some time. I think that's in the future. But to be at the double-A home of the Red Sox here is awesome. So hopefully tonight's going to finish off with uh, some fireworks, if you know what I mean. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you. Love you, Bigo. Love you too, man. There goes the owner of this here club, the reason why we have all gathered for the first time ever in the Forest City. And it's going to be the bottom of the Danners lineup in the bottom of the sixth. Vinny DeRubius, then DR Meadows, and Michael Deeb. 0 2 count on Vinny, who flew out to center his first time. Nico Scala with Josh Talevsky, joined by Tom Karen of Nesson. And Vinny pops that one out. So, Tom, we'll let you go after this happening because you have family here. Okay. You're, you're in your home state and, and you get to hang out. But what do you think here of, of maybe a possible banana ball rule? If you had to add one to Major League Baseball, what would it be? If I had to take one of their rules you gotta and, take one. and bring it to Major League Baseball, yes. that is a great, I, I, you know what? You know what would I, whoa, there was a bat into the dugout. Everybody be careful. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, it's not my favorite rule per se, but it could actually work. The stealing first base. On a wild pitch, let him go. Because I think that actually could work. And it would add a little bit of pressure to the pitcher. Uh, I, that or the no bunting. You know, right. Bunting sucks at the major league <laughs> level, as you guys said. And uh, it's going to take that out of the game because nobody bunts in Major League Baseball anymore anyway. Right. Except so, for TJ Friedel of the Reds. He's actually having a heck of a bunting season. Uh, I, the Red Sox are not that good at bunting. So <laughs> it wouldn't really affect us very much. So maybe that would be the easiest transition. I mean, I love the fan catch thing. That, that's phenomenal. Can you imagine if that was a Major League game? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'd be tough to sell. My Braves have only bunted once over the past season and, you know, into 2023. So I think I'm okay with that as well. Yeah, they're doing okay without the bunt. Look out! That one into the stands and everybody A-OK. -okay. Unfortunately, no one making a catch. See, I just, I, you know, I didn't bring a glove uh, and I'm not in a great spot. Like, it would have to be a high one that would come down. Easy catch if it gets to us. Another See, chance. Just, it might be the worst fielding crowd I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, it's just uh, tomorrow we're going to show highlights in the pregame show before the Red Sox Yankees game on Nesson at 1 o'clock. In our noon pregame show, I've got some commentary lined up about how bad this Hadlock field crowd has been. So it's going to be snagged by an incoming Tanner Thomas. Quick couple outs for Dylan Porter, who's trying to earn the party animals their second point of the night. He's an out away from achieving that feat. He's got to get through Michael Deeb, who's one for two on the ball game. Yeah, it, it's a dream come true to get to have a couple banana ball games on Ness and Monday night in Hartford was with the Sox off and then with a little Yankees Red Sox battle at 1 p.m. We get to follow it up with the nightcap tomorrow Great night. Double header. Come on. Here we go. Red Sox Yankees banana ball at night. That is the New England Sports Network for you. One, two, three inning. Oh man, Reese Hampton. Shows his took us to home plate, catches it between his legs, and what a way for the party animals to make it just a one-point game. Trick play number 13 for Reese Hampton, and the party animals are now sitting one trick play away from 200 as a team. And I got to hear you say took us. What <laughs> more could you ask for in my couple innings in the booth?
TC, thank you so much for joining us. This was an absolute blast, my man. It was a blast. Welcome to New England. We will see you hopefully at Fenway Park soon. I know Jesse has always talked about that being a dream. And, uh, you know, I grew up here in New England like he did as a Red Sox fan. And I think it's just so cool to see what he's done and to hopefully bring you guys not just to the double-A home of the Red Sox, but to Fenway Park, America's most beloved ballpark. Got to make it happen. Oh, my gosh. For the ballpark that's been around since 1912, the most legendary stadium we've got, and, of course, one near and dear to Jesse's heart. Got to make it happen. Love it. Thank you, guys. It's been a Thank blast. you very much. All right. I want to see a showdown. Let's go. That's a fact. There goes Tom Karen. We will throw it down to the field where we have a dizzy race going on, a dizzy family race at that. Young professor, take it away. Another thrilling, dizzy-themed race in Banana Land. However we draw it up, we make happen. And we head to the seventh inning. Three points for the Bananas, two for the Party Animals. Hello, Emerson Elmgren. As Nolan Daniel takes over for Dakota stiltz Albright and on the mound, we enter our Hoka's giveaway evening. For everybody watching on YouTube, in the link in the description, as well as in the comments section. It will take you to a spot where you want to throw all your contact information in, and then when it comes to the location where you need to put a buzzword, you want to put in slugger. Slugger is the buzzword tonight. Get yourself a chance at a free pair of hokas. Tanner Thomas sends this one out to left center with some power to it. He will... Cool the Jets at second base. And Mr. Tinder Thomas, now two for three on the night, adding a double to a triple and an RBI already. Tanner Thomas is on quite the pace in the extra base hit department. He's had, he had nine extra base hits coming into the month of July, but has more than doubled that since then with nine doubles, a triple, and two home runs since the start of July. Unbelievable work and a good piece of hitting leading off against Nolan Daniel. Now Bryson Bloomer will swing it. Two run shot over the main monster his first time. The 37 foot wall, 315 feet from home plate. The Boomer hit it 375, so he cleared it with some room to spare. And the party animals third baseman a teammate of Nolan Daniels for each of the last two summers in Banana Land. The duo, a huge reason, each of them, that the Bananas were able to repeat as Coastal Plain League champions. That one fouled into the Bananas dugout. A 2-2 count. You want to see some magic? Yes. How about this? Tanner Thomas, Bryson Bloomer, each of them a pretty good slugger. Ho! That is S-L-U-G-G-E-R, your buzzword tonight, Slugger. Which I believe is the name of the mascot here for the Portland Sea Dogs. Yes, it's not my pet name for you after the broadcast is over. <laughs> Great job, Slugger. Let's go get some ice cream. I do like that, though. Feels good. Payoff pitch. The slider is served out into right center. And Nolan Daniel gives up his first run since Kannapolis, North Carolina. Boy, oh boy. Has he been excellent in his professional banana ball debut so far this summer? Yeah, and it makes perfect sense that it was him who the Bananas wanted to turn to, entering the seventh with that one-point lead. But getting touched up a little bit to start this frame, if no one can dial it back in, work that sinker into the zone, and get some soft contact, 
who'll be able to get out of this frame with just a little bit of hurt. And let's remember, this is a guy who is not allowing sprints this season, so he's got that going for him entering play tonight. Along with the sinker and slider, he will throw some change-ups in there as well, especially to lefties like Jake Skull, who doubled his first time, but then came away with strikeouts in each of his last two trips to the dish against Kyle Lewix. Nolan now approaching nine innings on the tour without allowing a sprint. This is high with the off speed right there. Bloomer, Bloomer on first, always a threat to run. He's 19 for 24 in his stolen base tries. But I think with the way the party animals have swung the bat tonight, you're not going to try and get too aggressive with Bloomer on first base there. You're going to see if the boys can mount a hit or maybe make an out or two before you possibly try and send Bloomer into scoring position on a steal. Daniel uses the sinker to get a strike and then bounces the slider. And for the second straight hitter, he is in danger of giving up his first sprint in his banana ball career. The fourth year Nanner fires that in and the count now runs full. And it's going to be really interesting to see what the plan of attack here is for Daniel with the full count on Jake Skull. He's been really struggling with that breaking ball, but does Nolan feel comfortable enough to get a chase or throw it in the zone? Bryson Bloomer takes off. There is the first sprint allowed by Nolan Daniel, which was followed by a scream of what we can only imagine was quite possibly expletives, but his defense picks him up. Incredible sprint defense. Jake Skull trying to grab two bases and pays the price for the aggressive base running. We saw the Bananas get Kyle Lewigs out of the third, nailing Joe Weidel at second base. Now it's the second time that sprint defense has been able to take a runner off the base pass tonight. Good work once again by the Bananas. That's a big out for Nolan Daniel. Now they will bring the infield in for Garrett Delano, the extra hitter who gets a front door slider for strike one. He has struck out and flown into trick plays by Michael Deeb in left and DR Meadows in center. One ball and one strike. Two balls and a strike. Nolan right around 89 to 90 miles an hour with the sinker. The slider and changeup both around 80 miles per hour according to Trackman. There is a flail and a miss, a sword for Delano as he falls victim to the slider. Big 2-2 pitch with Bloomer leading off third. Bounce to short, Cox can't handle it. It will be an RBI for Garrett Delano as Bloomer scores the second run of the inning for the party animals. And that's a great piece of hitting by Garrett Delano, just shortening up the swing and being able to put that one in play. And now the party animals, as we saw in the PowerPoint, a very good team in the seventh inning this season, two runs on the board here. Can they get back even with the bananas at three points apiece? It was an 89 mile an hour sinker and Trackman had it at 91 miles per hour off the bat of Delano. Joe Lytle behind, no balls and one strike. A line out, fly out, and a one base sprint. And as he serves that one. Oh! Is it caught? Yes, Vincent Chapman confirms it. Up to the top row here in Hadlock Field and the great fans here in Portland, Maine come through with a huge second out here in the seven. And there it finally is. We've been teasing it throughout the broadcast, but the 50th fan to catch a foul ball on the 2023 World Tour has finally happened. A little breathing room now for Nono. He's trying to keep the damage at just two runs for the bad boys of Banana Ball. Slider evens up the count at one and one on Sam Clay Camp. The first baseman, a single and a run scored to go with a fly out and ground out. There goes Delano, an incredible jump. And after never attempting 
a stolen base until last Wednesday. He's now two for two on the tour. Banana ball. These shorts were made for stealing. <laughs> two two with two down and Delano dancing off second. That one past the dive of Coxon into left. Vava gives Delano the stop sign. Deeb's got a great arm. He will lob it in as Clay Camp two for four on the night. And runners on the corners now with two down in the seventh. Wasn't very hard off the bat there of Sam Clay Camp, but a slow roller and Ryan Cox paying a lot of attention to Garrett Delano on second base was not able to make up for that and be able to get to the ball in time and keep it in the infield. Now runners on the corners and Baber, who's had some, some hard hit balls tonight. Can he get some more runs across the board for the party animals here? There's a 76 mile an hour slider, 81 miles per hour off the bat as Baber gives this a ride and it will one hop the main monster out and left. Deep plays the wall well, gets it in to Cox as the cutoff, but Baber, Another barreled ball, that one 93 off the bat. Has his second double of the evening and his 19th run batted in on the season. And it's been nothing but well-struck balls for the Babester as even his out was a line out to right and in his only, only other trip to the dish, he worked a two base sprint. Very productive evening for the party animal's second baseman. As Chase Acuff trying to join the party, he turns on that one. D broke in, now goes back and can't adjust. Clay Camp and Baber both score. Acuff with the second straight party animals double. And another crooked number tonight for the boys in black and pink as they have scored five now here in the top of the seventh inning. It's been quite the ambush against Nolan Daniel who had been so solid on the tour coming into tonight. But after seeing Daniel for almost nine full innings, the party animals finally starting to get a feel for what he can bring out there on the mound. The ninth man to hit this inning is Reese Hampton. At the top of the order, he is two for four on the night. A single and a three run homer to go with a line out and reaching on a trick play missed his last time. Quick 2-0 count on the Animals left fielder. They get three balls and no strikes. And Nolan, who hadn't given up a sprint in his eight and two thirds innings pitched up until tonight, in danger of giving up his second sprint this evening and he will do it. Four straight bad ones to Reese Hampton. And the sprint will score Acuff easily. The flip to Michael Deeb, not clean from Danny Hosley. So it's a two base sprint and the party animals have batted around. Dalton Cornett will be the 10th man to swing it here in the top of the seven. Thirty fifth stake on the tour for Reese Lightning. As Acuff scores for the 36th time. And Cornett who has done just about nothing but mash balls tonight. Two doubles, a single, and a fly out to center. Fooled on the changeup behind 0-1. Checks his swing. John Byrne, the home plate umpire, makes the call himself. Says DC3 went around in a quick 0-2 count. And that's such a great recovery from Nolan Daniel after throwing four straight balls to Reese Hampton. Now just needs one more pitch here against Dalton Cornett to finally get out of this inning. Hampton leads off second. Six runs already home here in the top of the seventh for the party animals. And Cornette lines it, but into the mitt of Eric Jones Jr. to staunch the bleeding. Nanners need a historic rally to tie or win the seventh inning. If they can't do it, the party animals will be tying this game at three points apiece. We pop up into the broadcast booth where our good friend Fela Fieri has joined us. And yeah, it is that time of night, buddy. What kind of delectable treat have you brought us? Well, boys, you guys have been up here working pretty hard. Uh, you've been chatting with the folks. 
Uh, you guys deserve a sweet treat, don't you, boys? I cool. would like that. That, that would this, be nice, this fella. This is uh, out of Guilford's. Uh, it is home main ice cream for those of you at home that enjoy puns. Uh, this is a sea dog. It's two chocolate. Home main ice cream right in the middle. Oh, baby. So you guys want to look at that? Get a load of that. One for you, my friend. Mm. Another for you, Josh. Oh, yeah. And one for the big fella. <laughs> got, a little, got a little homemade ice cream on the headset here. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. That is a classic ice cream sandwich. That is immaculate vanilla ice cream, I must say. Great find, fella. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I think the, any comments on the consistency of the cookie here? The cookie is very doughy, surprisingly doughy. Yeah. For one that is, you know, of the ice cream variety. Normally these are a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good. Chocolate chips are good and crunchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thick chips. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm happy with the soft cookie personally. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. Yeah, and they're, that's they're, what I want. The, the chocolate chips are of the morsel variety, which I do appreciate. Oh, much it's not a chip, it's a morsel. Much more than the chunks of the chips is the is the chocolate morsel we have here. Bella, when you're, you know, whipping up some kind of culinary masterpiece, uh, especially of the dessert variety, are, are you a guy who usually leans toward the morsel or the chip? I'm morsel all the way. Mm. Uh, I missed time my bite there. I didn't realize you were going to ask me a question. I really wanted I'm, to get another bite here. I apologize. Um, I go fella. morsel. I go morsel, all the way. What about you? Um, I don't think that I've had enough morsels in my life, so I skew chip personally. <laughs> and uh, my favorite ice cream is mint chip. So mm, okay. Also got to say that that's holding some weight. All right, uh, what everyone's dying to know at home, uh, ratings. We need ratings. Be this is first. a 9.4 out of 10 on the ice cream mm. cookie. Okay, Josh. I'm going to go 9.6. I love the vanilla ice cream. That's what's taking the cake more than anything. Or taking the cookie? Oh. That's oh. how the cookie crumbles. Oh. All right, we got a we got a 9.4 from Biko. We got a 9.6 from Josh. Um, you know. I'm a, I'm gonna go a nine five. You know, split it right down the middle. Yes. So we'll average all this out to a nine five collectively. It's incredibly good. No free ads, but Guilford's, heck of a good job. That is some incredible homemade ice cream. Hey, Bill. Pika, you had Bill. some pretty fun ice cream uh, last night. Did you not? I did. I can't quite remember where I got it, but it was a local ice cream shop in Portland, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. It was sweet cream, honey, and salt. Is uh, that correct? It was salt, honey, and wildflower. Is That's what it. You're missing. It was incredible, mind-boggling, and surprisingly accurate. Cup cone. Cone, waffle cone, baby. Good battle brewing here between Dan Oberst and Jake Lealios, the new man on the mound for the party animals. As now it's a full count, Lealios primarily forcing fastballs and 12-6 curves. He's got a six-run cushion as Dan gives the fans another opportunity to make a catch and they once again fail to do so. And that fan has his hands on his hat, so distraught he was not able to come up with that catch. Boy, you're seeing a lot of emotions from the people as Dan's giving him another opportunity, and that one is clanging off one of the sweet windows. All these people really want 51. Another 3-2. This one lifted a mile high in foul territory. Bloomer and Cornett converging. DC3 never saw it. But the boomer will grab it for out number one. So Mr. Oberst 0 for 3 on the night. And now Eric Jones Jr. will do his darndest to try and kickstart a six or seven run rally to salvage this seventh inning. Fellow, while we have you, what are your thoughts on uh, Maine's take on the lobster roll? I know they're pretty known for lobster roll, but do you really believe that they're the best place to, to lay claim to such a thing? <clears throat> uh, they're synonymous. You know, Maine and the lobster roll, uh, they go hand in hand or claw in claw. 
as some <laughs> might want to say. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I actually uh, had my first one uh, of my life the other day. Uh, I'm glad I was um, made aware that the meat was served cold. Uh, otherwise, that would have been a, a bit of a shock for my for my senses. Oh, it would have been jarring. Would have huh? been jarring, yeah. Uh, but overall, you know, I don't see how they get that claw meat out so easily. Golly, after a rare right on right changeup, gets a swing and a miss. Eric Jones Jr. takes Jake Lealios Oppo Taco to the land of good and plenty, and has his tour leading 12th tater on the season. And that is the fourth home run of the ball game. And you never know, even though the Bananas now down five runs in this inning, can that big swing from EJ, who is taking a bow in front of his teammates, start to bring some momentum and cause one of the craziest rallies we've ever seen? We're about to find out. The former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer showing the incredible power he possesses, sending that one out to right center. Now Dakota McFadden, who a hitter ago was only three homers off the tour lead. Now with his eight long balls, sits four behind Eric Jones Jr. It might be back to three. No, this one is gonna be caught on a stupendous leaping catch. Crashing into the wall is Reese Hampton and coming down with the banana ball. It wasn't the prettiest route to the ball, but Reese Hampton made an unbelievable snag up against that monster, crashing down and being able to hold on to that. And now Alex Ziegler, with the lights out in Hadlock Field, is balancing a flaming bat and flipping it around in his hands as he comes up to home plate. And we're gonna play this whole at bat with the lights out, aren't we? This one fouled off. And fans have a chance to catch a foul ball here. Now the lights are on, thank goodness. Kind of felt like a hazard. Pelopieri, <laughs> 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 were you slightly worried that sending a foul ball towards the fans with the lights off could have ended badly? Well, I'll tell you what. The at-bat ends well for the Nanners. Alex Ziegler, with the bat literally still on fire, has a base knock. Swinging a hot stick per usual. Alex Ziegler keeping the rally alive here in the seventh. It smells like cedar. Is that ash? Cedar? I think it's ash. The big 12-6 curve finds a strike here to Ryan Cox. With the lights back on, the Bananas attempt at a six-run rally, still very much alive. 1-1 count now on the shortstop, who has popped out and singled tonight. Big cut and a miss. An excellent changeup there from Lealios, and a 1-2 count on the Glove Magician. Make it two and two. Fouled off and John Byrne is gonna give Dalton Cornett a little time to shake that one off as it bounced right off his mask. Anders need to bring three batters up after Ryan Cox if they wanna try and tie this inning so it is very much just past the baton time as we just crossed the 10 minute mark on our two hour timer. Pop left side towards the fans and it goes into the party animals bullpen. Still a 2-2 two -two count on the Nanner shortstop. Another opportunity for the fans to make a play. And they come up empty. Bananas Hope still alive, albeit quite slim, as Cox continues to pepper balls into the stands. And the fans keep giving him opportunities to take more hacks. And we saw Jake Lealias go in a nine-pitch battle with Dan Oberst to start this half inning. Now it's Ryan Cox who's about to see a ninth pitch. 
That one lifted into shallow center. Skull skips over and goes behind his back for a magnificent trick play. Party Animals win the inning six runs to one and have tied the game three points apiece. And we are going to start the inning lightning quick here, but we've got to recognize that is the 200th trick play for the Party Animals on the tour. What a miraculous way for it to happen. As we begin the top of the eighth inning, Zach Phillips, the new man on the mound, and 345 due to swing it for the Party Animals. Felifieri, thank you so much, my dear friend. I know you've got all kinds of duties you have to attend to here in Hadlock Field. I'll see you guys in Flavortown. <laughs> That's a fact. Thank you, my dear man. How about Tanner Thomas? His second triple of the ball game and his fourth on the tour. He is three for four on the night, having himself a heck of a first ever banana ball game here in Maine. Third extra base hit of the night. His two triples accompanied by a double. And he stands 90 feet away from scoring. A one now to Bryson Bloomer, just misses down and in. 1-1 one, one count on the Party Animals third baseman, who's two for four with a home run and three RBIs to himself. He's up to 48 ribeyes on the tour. Two behind Mr. Tinder Thomas for the season lead. The Anders have the infield in, and a cut and a miss. No, a cut and a foul ball at the plate. The Boomer stays alive. One tapped foul, and the battle continues. Phillips, a very savvy southpaw, four seam, two seam cut fastballs, as well as a curveball and changeup, as that one is fouled out of the entire premises. And he's been getting a lot of work here in August and working quickly. The average MPI is around three and a half minutes, and that's because of one inning where the party animals were able to keep him out there for a long time. But here, despite battling with Bloomer, able to get that pitch, running in on Bloomer, and get the swing and the miss for a big first strikeout. It was a tight curveball. Now he has to deal with Jake Skull, the former first round draft pick, fouls that out of the entire stadium. One for three on the night, a double, a couple of strikeouts, and a one base sprint his last time up. Front door curveball. Sets up an 0-2 offering here. Phillips with four years of minor league baseball experience all in the Kansas City Royals organization after they took him in the 27th round in 2019. Made it up to double A, the highest level that Jake Skoll got to in the Texas Rangers and New York Yankees organizations. Ole Miss on the mound versus UGA at the dish. And the count still no balls and two strikes. And you saw Phillips before throwing that offering to Jake Skull go fastball high up and Jake Skull fouling that one off. It gave Phillips the confidence to go back to the breaking ball and good work Skull being able to spoil that one as he takes this one high and outside. Yeah, Zach drops down a little bit there. Now the kid out of Texarkana, Texas. Fires the curveball below the zone. Skull has worked it back to a 2-2 count. Phillips, his defenders, and over 7,000 of his fiercest friends here in Portland, Maine, all wanted the strikeout call there. John Byrne disagreed. And Reggie Liggins calls that one a foul ball. We now have a pop of the fan challenge on if that was a fair or foul ball, that has to be what we're doing here. And Jesse Cole saying, no, no, no. He is denying the fan challenge because we have less than five minutes on the clock and we would love to get to the ninth inning tonight. Fans are up in arms. They want another look. The battle continues and Skull works a sprint. Tanner Thomas does the most bizarre swaggering walk home that I think I've ever seen in my broadcasting career. And the party animals, winners of the last two innings, have put a run aboard here in the top of the eighth. And what a plate appearance by Jake Skull. That one going into double digits between him and Phillips. And this is the guy who sees more pitches per plate appearance than anybody else on the tour. 
being able to make Phillips battle and eventually winning as you saw a frustrated Zach Phillips with that ball four sprint call. Just grabbed his season leading 39th ball four sprint. And as we have an 0-2 count on Garrett Delano. Currently 0 for 4 on the night, although he did drive in a run on an error his last time. And he will be struck out on the curveball. Second K of the inning for Zach Phillips. Now it'll be Joe Lytle. Fouled out to a fan his last time. Pickoff attempt over at first. And Jake Skoll is picked off. Party animals won't challenge. We have three minutes and change on the clock as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning where if the timer runs out during this frame, then every run scored in this inning will count as a point. Now, it doesn't really matter because the Bananas trail by a point. As Dalton Malden leads it off, bounces it over the head of Drew Gillespie and has himself an infield single as Dustin Baber can't ascertain the bare hand. So Malden hitting in place of Danny Hosley there. With a huge pinch hit single, he's immediately pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell, who gets his third trip running the bags this evening. Represents the potential inning and game tying run if our timer that now approaches the two minute mark runs out during the eighth. Jackson Olsen blasted a fifth inning two run walk off homer his last time. He grounded out to second his first trip. And he's ahead two balls and a strike. Drew Gillespie out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, a very funky reliever and has been the most valuable Party Animals pitcher, albeit with a limited sample size thus far as the fans fail to make a play there. And we have a 2-2 count on the grade eight. Yeah, and it's no surprise, this is the guy the Party Animals are going with, pitching in a lot of high leverage spots. He's become their showdown pitcher as well. So with the game kind of on the line, should the time clock expire here, they want Gillespie in to try and protect no run scoring so the Party Animals could jump out to the win with the run that they scored that would then be a point here in the eighth inning. We'll have another 2-2 two -two from Gillespie who can go four seam, two seam, cut fastball, change up curveball. Same exact arsenal as Zach Phillips except from the other arm. Dalton Cornett fires it down to second, not in time to get Malachi Mitchell who grabs another 90 feet on the wild pitch. And now the potential inning and game tying run in scoring position. Payoff pitch coming to Jackson Olsen with 40 seconds on the clock. And this is an extremely dangerous pitch from Gillespie. Ball four would surely score flash from second base. This ball lifted to center. Jake Skull hardly has to move. And there is out number one. It'll be Vinny DeRubius who has flown out to Skull in center and Hampton in left in his two plate appearances so far tonight. Ten seconds on the clock. Need a home run on this swing or else this will be the final inning of the night. That one lined to right. It's going to be grabbed on a hop by Tanner Thomas who can't handle it. And as the young professor announces that this will be the final inning, the Bananas tie the game at four points apiece. And now Vinny DeRubius on first base represents the potential game winning run. And that was one clutch piece of hitting by Vinny DeRubius and a costly play by Tanner Thomas trying to field that one, held up and was willing to let that ball drop into right field. but was trying to watch Vinny a little too much over there at first base, and that ball ended up ricocheting off the glove and allowing Mitchell to score. Now to the hottest hitter that the Nanners employ with one out and the potential game-winning run on first base. D.R. Meadows two for three on the night. Pops one towards the stands. It's going to 
leave the ballpark and a quick 0-2 count on the Nanner center fielder. And kind of surprising given that this is officially the last inning of the ball game, the Bananas keeping Vinny on the base pass to run as DR lifts this one out towards left. And once again, it is Reese Hampton masterfully just knowing his location out there towards the monster and coming down with that catch. That is why you saw that man in minor league baseball. Reese Lightning is putting on a defensive clinic. Not to mention he's got a homer single and two base sprint offensively. He has now made two masterful catches crashing into the left field wall. And your original question has now been answered. Vinny DeRuby is pinch run for by Noah Bridges. Some guys just watch the broadcast, you know. <laughs> That's the minute and a half delay getting to Adam Viren and Tyler Gillum. They realize Josh has a good point. Now the game lies in the hands of Drew Gillespie and Michael Deeb. Incredible speed now on first base. Noah Bridges takes off. Throw no throw from Dalton Cornett, a wise decision. Bridges now a perfect 11 for 11 when he's been trying to steal bags outside of first base. And the ninth inning is when you see Tyler Gillum sending these guys a lot on stolen base chances. And good work by Cornett just eating that and not allowing the error. Oh, Michael Vitamin Deeb walks it off. The Nanners win this one in a thriller, five to four, and they take game one in Portland, Maine. What the that hell? is one of the wilder finishes you will ever see in banana ball. What a rally by the Nanners in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And it's capped off by Michael Deeb, who earlier we talked about, trying to drive it towards that miniature monster. The, and Deeb, just an unbelievable piece of hitting, sending it off the wall, and Reese Hampton trying his very best to come down with that. The Bananas finally back in the win column after that tough loss in Brockton. Here's Bill Leroy to shout out himself and his teammates. Coming to the mound to celebrate Bananas win, myself, Bill Leroy. Up next, we have our wonderful coaches, Coach Adam Byron and Coach Tyler Gillow. And our amazing entertainers, Malachi, Flash the Kid Mitchell. Our bat trickster with a bat on fire tonight, Alex Ziegler. The tallest man in sports, Dakota Stilts Albright. And last but not least, our dancing first base coach, Maceo. And we have our pitchers in reserves. Starting pitcher, Cowboy Kyle Louise. Jared Donaldson, Zach Phillips, Connor Higgins, Nolan Daniel, Matt Malatesta, DJ the Invader, Christian Mr. Electric Gearman, and Ryan Kellogg. Up next, my dear friend, Rocky number three in catching barrels, leaving the yard tonight, Eric Jones. Up next, you know him and love him, Savannah Bananas, heartthrob, wearing number nine, Noah Bridges. The slugger, wearing number 19, with the legend, Reginald Hearn, Mr. Danny Oberst. The YMCA man, rocket number 18, Mr. Danny Hosley. Our trick shortstop, our glove magician, rocket number six, Mr. Ryan Cox. The doctor, catching barrels all day long, swiping bases and doing backflips, DR Meadows. Singing his own single, getting a hit tonight, wearing number 13. Check it out on Spotify. How'd you keep her? Don Malden. The Italian Stallion. Starting us off in the last inning with a base hit. Vinny Derubius. Coming up, beating his chest. Rocket number 24, Dakota. D-Mac McFadden.
Walking off the game tonight, the barrel man with all the grooves, number seven, Michael Vibin D. Last but not least, our social media star and our greatest showman, number eight, Jackson Olsen. tonight thank you so much for the love and the support we're not done yet all the players all the cast we're going out in front to meet you guys take pictures and thank you so much we love you banana nation we'll see you outside well an absolute roller coaster ride of a first ever banana ball game here in maine Vacation land became banana land, and what a doozy it was. Alongside Josh Tulevsky, I am Biko Scala. Thank you so much for spending your Friday night with us here on BTV, watching on YouTube and Nesson 360 in absolute blast. And boy, that game went into hyperdrive late. I mean, you talk about two long innings from Nolan Daniel and Jake Lealius, which I really think took up most of the clock as we were making pretty good time until that point. And then you have the fast in-between innings breaks there between Zach Phillips and Drew Gillespie getting out there on the mound. And from there, it was just offensive chaos. Yeah, could not have said it any better myself. Looks like people are fighting with our backdrop here. That's okay, because we're going to bid this thing adieu. As soon as we have the technology ready to rumble, we will be descending down into the party plaza to try and grab some instant reactions from the fellas after a wild 5-4 walk-off victory for the Nanners and boy oh boy the time is nigh Nick Keldy oh we have what's going on Chad replays. we've got replays oh baby the folks in the control room down in Savannah Georgia are impressing once again well we were waxing poetic on Reese Hampton Reese Hampton's defensive clinic in left he could not make a game saving play that would have sent it to showdowns I mean, it was masterful work up until that point, getting the catch up against the monster and the one very near it. But for Reese, that third time proved to be the charm for Michael Deeb, at least, as he was able to sneak that one past Sits, grab the old handheld mic, and take a very interesting journey down to the party plaza here in Hadlock Field. 4-1, and Nick Keldy nearly takes out a garbage can behind us. We will take a peek behind the curtain, literally, and uh, descend down probably the most unique staircase I've ever seen in my illustrious uh, broadcasting career here. It is the spiral staircase, and we go straight into the Portland Sea Dogs office after you see some of the legends of... Up, wait up, wait Melissa, up, Melissa Beal, Melissa Bean Supreme. Okay, I'm just giddy to get out to the party plaza and continue to have to pump the brakes here as I fly down the spiral staircase that has us two floors lower and now somewhere in the doldrums of the Portland Sea Dogs office. Hey, shout out Elvis. What an absolute, uh, really incredibly bizarre picture there, and I love it. Uh, okay, so now we peruse through. Melly B, you're, you're going to point me out on how to escape this place? Okay. 
say thank you so much. Josh, my partner, has joined me here. Uh, this is a, a really unique journey that it will take to get out to the party plaza, which will appear somewhere. The sound in here is absolutely muffled by what is going on in the Sea Dogs office, which now we get a little Hall of Fame action from Sea Dogs teams of uh, the past. And now I can hear that banana band blasting away your moments away from opening out onto the party plaza. How about the Nanners tonight? A five to four walk off victory. Michael Deeb with his. All of a sudden, we are out in Portland, Maine, one of my favorite cities in the entire world. I have my partner in crime, Josh Cholevsky, who was able to make it down here as well. And now we have to attack this party plaza. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hopefully I did a masterful job just making sure to get you out of the doors and everything. A uh, little bit of a, a rocky uh, rocky route to get down here, but I, I did enjoy the spiral staircase nonetheless. Okay, sweet. Yeah, the spiral staircase is incredibly unique. All right, now we're going to maybe just sneak on through by the inflatables here. Yeah, let's do a little, little up and under. Thank you, Josh. Nick Kelby, our roaming cameraman. You can follow in tow as well as we have the man in the yellow tux and hopefully some players nearby so we can get some instant reactions and then bid you adieu so you can enjoy the rest of your Friday night free of us on the old YouTube and Nessun 360. So uh, what a wild scene out here in the party plaza. The banana band jamming it to our left in all of their brass magnificence and now we try and hunt for some players. Yeah, again, just to recap tonight's game, we saw four home runs from the Bananas and the Party Animals. Eric Jones Jr. and company Jackson Olsen and big flies from some of the Party Animals. Bryce and Bloom are going deep yet again. And the 50th fan to ever catch a foul ball in Banana Ball World Tour history on the 2023 tour. That is just unbelievable night and 200 trick plays for the Party Animals. And what you have to look for Forward to in the future for the banana ball game tomorrow night the guys both teams combined are only two trick plays away from 500 as a unit on this year's world tour yeah unbelievable the numbers that you just broke out are all mind-boggling we knew we were in for a doozy tonight in portland thank the incredible full capacity crowd that made up the 274th straight sold out bananas game for getting that all important 50th trick play an unbelievable job by them or a foul ball caught by a fan rather and now we look at an incredibly jam-packed party plaza our coordinating producer chad reese had has ventured out into it and is hoping to bring us back some fun interviews. Uh, Josh, when I look at that right here, I don't see a chance in the world that the two of us in, in our small frames could bust our way through it. I, I was going to say, uh, you know, throwing it back to a little interview with Jared Carabas, we are average guys, and, you know, some of us, I'd like to think of myself as a skinnier man, but it does not seem very likely that I can squeeze through this crowd. I mean, it is just jam-packed out here in this party plaza, which, by the way, once again, need to commend Hadlock Field. Such a beautiful destination for Banana Ball. Not only the park, but kind of this surrounding area in the plaza. Very fun. Could not agree more. This is a stupendous arena to uh, host a banana ball game. It has been here since the early 90s. And boy, oh boy, home of the Portland Sea Dogs that started out as a Florida Marlins minor league team back before they switched over to being the Miami Marlins. Uh, and then, of course, have been a Red Sox affiliate since the early 2000s. And it has been a smash hit ever since as we are in the heart of Red Sox Nation up in Portland, Maine, just a couple hours north of Fenway Park, 111 miles north of Fenway Park at that. So uh, Chad Reese is going to try and ascertain the big kahuna for us, and Chad delivers as per usual. Mr. Jesse Cole signing autographs galore. We are back in your neck of the woods, and an absolute thriller. All of a sudden, the two-hour timer ends, and Michael Deeb sends a skyrocket out to left. It's a walk-off double, thrilling two-run eighth, and the Bananas win it. It came down to the last inning, all right, which we adjusted because of the time limit. What a finish. I mean, banana ball, wow. Party animals, great. The last rally, the last three innings, and the bananas to come back. You can't ask much more for a game like that.
Jesse, tonight we had a little bit of banana ball history. We had our 50th fan to catch a foul ball on this year's world tour. How cool is it to reach that mark on the tour? <laughs> I think when we started, we never knew it would happen that much, but to see 50 and then over 200 trick plays, you know, that's what this game is supposed to be. You know, fans involved and players doing things you've never seen before in a baseball field, and that's what it's all about. We return to Nesson tomorrow night for the second battle between the Bananas and Party Animals here in Portland, Maine. The Nanners a win away from taking the Pine State. How cool has it been seeing this thing travel now into uh, another state that could be up for grabs and all of a sudden the map's turning yellow and pink all over the country? Well, it's great because you're getting new fan bases all over, but most importantly, we're learning so much about this game. I mean, the more games we play, the more they'll learn about, hey, we had to adapt. We did two of the world's fastest half innings, you know, in the seventh eighth inning so we could get that in and try to work it i mean it's amazing what we're seeing and now you think we have only a few games left in this tour it's you couldn't write it up better than this jesse it's going to be really fun to decide this state tomorrow do you have any bold predictions going into the game <laughs> yes i do well we got so we got kellogg versus fluke right we got a heck of a matchup, heck of a matchup. you know fluke's going to entertain kellogg's going to try to dance but he's going to pitch very well it's going to come down to the last inning we cannot argue with that. Jesse Cole, thank you so much, as always. Thanks, there goes Jesse, the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, now we will attempt to push our way through this thing a little bit, and we'll see if we are fruitful or not. Chad Reese has a location in mind for us, and we're going to continue to weave our way through the party plaza as we can. A wild 5-4 to four come from behind victory for the Bananas tonight after the party animals grab the lead in the top of the eighth inning. The Bananas rally for two runs in the bottom half and all of a sudden have themselves a six-game advantage over the party animals for the second time on this tour. They are now 31 and 25 against their arch rivals as we continue to plow our way through this thing. Those shirts absolutely rock. Absolutely high fire. five for you guys. Yeah, that is really good stuff. A little Shout double high five. Donaldson. Shout out Jared Donaldson. Jared? We took a picture with them in the bathroom. Good. Shout out Donnie. A little bathroom right, pic right, with the boys. Right, okay, right. let's get it on the broadcast. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, these polos just came out. One of my favorite things I've seen in my entire Jared life. Donaldson. The only thing I might like more than that is a little selfie in the bathroom with Donnie. That's legendary stuff. Great to meet you guys. Uh, yeah, Donnie, he'll be somewhere out here. I promise you that. Where Jared Donaldson is, that is uh, information I do not have. Let me try and, uh-oh, look out. Yep. Okay, that'll do. Yep, good work, good work. The wired mic, and somehow nobody got clotheslined there. That is an absolute miracle. We continue to try and inch our way through this party plaza. Great to see the Syracuse Orange getting some love. Let's go. Go Orange. Good. That's a fact. That is a fact. Uh, so it's good to see the orange out here. You know, you never know. And you get a little central New York school. They might make their way up to Portland, Maine. stumble into some of these rapscallions that we so badly desire to talk to and we'll see if we can continue to make our way over there yeah 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 here we go noah bridges the man who scored the game winning run on that michael vitamin d game winning double and we'll see if we can grab mr bridges who also got to perform a few TikTok dances with fans tonight and i have to say that the good folks here in Portland, Maine, entertained every step of the way. I mean, you got the home runs, but you also had some great 3-2-2s, 6-2-2s from the guys, and some fun home run celebrations as well, and it's easy to get those, especially when you get four from the team tonight. And here we go as we're approaching Noah Bridges. Let's see if we can get him. First of all, uh, we can't overlook the trick play you just had behind the back with the mic. That was that was really impressive stuff. Yes, uh, Josh, we got an autograph coming right here. And Noah Bridges, of course, the fans first made himself. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That really warms the heart. Uh, Noah, whenever we can, buddy, we'd love to chat with you, but no rush. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, autograph o'clock. All right, Noah, pleased to have you on the broadcast now. I'm pretty honest. wacky ending to the game, cool, and you get cool. to score the game-winning run. Yeah. Just kind of describe that rally for the Bananas tonight. Well, it was a good rally, you know, Vinny with a nice single. And then I'm, I'm, I'm up in the stands, actually, 
I was hanging out with Lindsay. She just came out of the hospital yesterday. So she was in a wheelchair. I'm hanging out with her. And I see Coach Gillen frantically pacing in the dugout. And I was like, he's, he's probably looking for me. So I'm like, one second. I run down. Well, I'm like, Lindsay, you're going to give me good luck right here. I'm about to go play. She's like, okay. I run down the wheel, or I run down the stairs. Flash throws his helmet. Hits me right in the chest. Knocks me out of breath. Coach like, go run. I'm still second. Deeb walks it off with a single. I run, touch the plate, score, run straight up to Lindsay, give her a high five, said, you gave us good luck, ran down, celebrated. But Vinny started it off, Deeb with the big knock to end it. I just in the right place, used my wheels. I mean, that is a really cool fans first moment, Noah. And we've seen Malachi Mitchell mostly be the guy who's been pinch running this season for the Bananas, but you've come in on a select few occasions like you did tonight. Tell me, what's kind of the strategy for you when you're on base and called into those kinds of situations? Well, I hadn't stretched uh, for a whole nine innings, so <laughs> I just ran down the stairs and I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch one because I know we had two outs and he gets in scoring position, so I watch. One move to the plate. I was like, all right, he kind of got a little bit of a hang. Get out there. I'm, like, I'm just running no matter what right here. Probably <laughs> for the best right here. Now, Noah, we also can't forget about the fact that you were doing some TikTok dances. Yeah. It's become one of the more interesting yeah. mid-game promotions in Banana Ball. Tell me about how tonight went for you, man. It was pretty good. Uh, we bodied, especially the second one. We changed up a little bit. We absolutely bodied it. The crowd loved it. And... Uh, it's always fun when we pull out, we do two younger girls doing TikToks because it's more their demographic, and then we run out the dad who's a little older, and the crowd goes crazy, and then we nail a TikTok, and we were so in sync on the little dolphin dive into the ground. The crowd loved it. It was pretty fun. Josh, you asked everything I could ever dream of. Everyone and their mom is hoping for a No Bridges autograph. We'll let you get back to the fans. Thank you, my dear man. You want to say anything? It's the broadcast. So go bananas, something. What up? Yeah. Go bananas. What up? That was Thanks the go. perfect Thanks. two words. <gasps> okay, we are going to follow Mr. Chad Reese and see if we cannot find another banana or two going through the old catacombs, the back way here in Hadlock Field as we have now gone into the parking lot and we'll hopefully weave our way back into the party plaza here for one last golden interview. Boy, it's always fun to see Mr. Jared Orton, the president and an executive producer of BTV, for that matter, wearing the schnazziest pants in uh, the entirety of Banana Land. Thank you all so much for coming to the Banana Ball Game. Appreciate you all. We now find ourselves back into the party plaza and the man of the hour up here against the wall will be our final interview of the night. Appreciate everybody who has stuck around hanging out on BTV here on YouTube and Nesson 360. It has been a wild first ever banana ball game in the great state of Maine. And now with Reginald Horton, Dakota Stilts Albert, and Dakota McFadden and Kyle Lewigs, there is at least one superstar banana that we're going to be able to ascertain for the broadcast closer here. Biko, any guesses on who? I mean, you know, we could put a little wager down. Who you think it's going to be, buddy? Well, we get him in just about every broadcast, except for the ones that he pitches in. I kind of think Cowboy Kyle Lewigs is going to make another appearance. Oh, out of nowhere, Eric Jones Jr., a man with an opposite field home run today, muscled out a 12-6 curveball for his tour-leading 12th ding-dong. EJ, how good does it feel to watch those dozen balls soar out of ballparks all across the country? Popping your barrel is a feeling unlike anything else. That's why... I had to leave Seattle. I had to come to Banana Land. I got more barrels to pop. You heard it here. <laughs> now, EJ, we saw one of the crazier banana ball games all tour. Four home runs, the 50th fan catching a ball for an out. Walk me through what it was like tonight in that bananas dugout from start to finish. Banana ball is an extremely emotional game. You got highs, you got lows. It's a game of momentum. Things happen quickly. You got to be able to just reset on the fly know whatever the situation is to play the game the best you can you know it doesn't help uh to live in the past they hit some home runs tonight everybody was hitting the ball uh so when it's your opportunity when you're stepping up you just got to try to make something happen try to do your job but uh top to bottom entire lineup did an amazing job pitchers threw well uh this was an amazing banana ball game to watch so shout out all these fans they were uh rocking it was just it was an amazing game start to finish i can't wait for tomorrow yeah, can you talk about the atmosphere a little bit? Because in Brockton, Massachusetts, it felt like the 6,000 folks there were rocking like 6,000 we had never seen before on the tour. And then here tonight with 7,000 plus in Portland, Maine, all of a sudden you've got them pounding on the uh, on the bleachers. There's all kinds of chants and claps. I felt like this was a very cohesive fan group. 
It really felt like we were playing at Fenway. It was so loud. We had a big old monster back there and left. Uh, beautiful ballpark, good lights. Uh, it's really everything you could want in a banana ball game and in a banana ball crowd. I mean, I think at this point, people know they're in for a good show, so they're bringing the energy every night, and uh, this Northeast trip's just been amazing. Eric Jones Jr., thank you so much, my dear friend. Uh, I know you got a bajillion people who need you here more than us, but we appreciate you giving us some of your time. No, oh, thank you guys. You guys are the best. Love you guys. Lo love my family. Shout out you guys. To all the folks down in Charlotte, North Carolina, one of the Queen City Killers here on this tour, of course, alongside Mr. Reese Hampton as well. And now we wait for one bonus interview at the end of our broadcast here. It is the darling of Banana Land, a co-captain of this Bananas team with his battery mate, Bill Leroy. And boy, oh boy, Kyle, those party animals brought out the bats early, but you were able to rebound and have a really solid start after those first two innings, buddy. It's really nice hat, man. You look a lot like myself. Um, yeah, Thank they you. came. Oh, really nice stuff. Um, yeah, they came out swinging. Um, I think that's another reason why banana ball is so incredible. You know, because you're never out of it. Um, you give up a tough two spot. I think it was long overdue with Bloomer finally seeing one of my sliders and taking it yard. I mean, that's got, that guy's one of my best friends. So, you know, you hate it, but you also love to see it at the same time. It's good for him. And then, you know, I just I hung a curveball to Reese and he put it out. But, um, you know, after that, my team kind of kept me in it. We bounced around a little bit and then give him a chance to win, and that's what we did. So that's all I can ask for. Kyle, walk me through your kind of mindset. I mean, touched up a little bit, but still able to recover and throw some really great innings. In fact, a one minute and 29 second minutes per inning mark for you tonight. Tell me, how are you able to regather out there on the mound tonight? Um, yeah, like I said earlier, it's kind of just, you know, trying to tr treat each inning like its own game. You know, you're never out of it. If you give up a four spot, it's going to be hard to tie that inning or win that inning. Uh, but the best thing you can do is go out there the next inning and put up a zero, you know, give them a chance. Um, I didn't give up a home run on the 120 foot pitch tonight. So that <laughs> was a big win for myself and um, didn't script the 3-2-2 that bad. So happy in my books. Yeah, can you walk us through that 120 foot pitch because it's the nastiest two seamer I've ever seen in my life and I am surprised that you were able to strike out the hardest man to strike out in Division 2 baseball in 2018 Chase Acuff on that nasty 120 footer. Well, if you can't strike him out from 60 feet 6 inches, you might as well try something new, you know, you can't get any closer to the plate. So why not back it up a little bit? Um, you know, I feel really comfortable with it out there. It was a little slippery. Um, but, you know, we adjust and overcome, and, and I felt like it was a good time to do it, and uh, luckily it was a strike, and, and yeah. Kyle, stilts pitched. Alex Ziegler got a base hit with the bat on fire. The Bananas rallied to win this ball game. What do you think is next for tomorrow night in Portland, Maine? Um, well, I hope that I digest another lobster roll at some, at some <laughs> moment. Um, I hope the Bananas win again. I think we've got a, another fun-packed antic game full of, uh, you know, the Canadian's going to take the mound for us for Kellogg, and I really like the way he's been pitching lately. Um, the boys are swinging it. I feel like it's a, a bit of a hitter's ballpark, so love to see some more long balls for the boys in yellow, and, you know, I'm going to do my best to dance and entertain the people and maybe hang out with you two folks. All right. We'll see, Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Thank you so much for joining us, as per usual, my dear friend. Thank you guys so much for having me. See you later. We've got some young fans. What do you guys got on the mind tonight after seeing this banana ball game? It was amazing. I, I can't say anything. It was, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. It was amazing. I can't say anything. What are your names? Nolan. Anders. Nolan and Anders, uh, appreciate you guys coming out and goofing around with us here on the uh, first ever banana ball game in Maine. Would you like this game worn by a broadcaster hat? Yeah. Yes, he would. Okay. I bestow it upon you. There you go, my dear friend. You guys are now honorary BTV members. Thank you for going bananas with us this evening. Now to give away a pair of hokas, as we always do, Chad Reese, you are incredible. Drum roll, please, Josh. <laughs> 
Incredible timing there. Our winner of the Hoka's tonight in Banana Land on the YouTube and Nesson 360 broadcast is Amanda Sismansky. Amanda Sismansky, congratulations on your new pair of Hoka's. You get to customize them thanks to Melicent Beans Supreme. And that gets us into the shout outs for our entire crew that makes this broadcast possible. It starts down in Savannah. Yeah, sometimes it goes quicker than you could ever be, Mr. Reese. It starts down in Savannah. Savannah, where our director and technical director, Griffin Ellis, is pressing all the right buttons and making all the right decisions all the time. On the audio, it is Dakota Burnsed, absolutely owning the ones and the twos. The score bug was handled by Michael Basista. The graphics were run by Julia Massey, and the stats on said graphics were dominated by Mikey O'Connor, a three-person crew. That is the best in the biz in the graphics world. On the replay, Jackson Hamilton and Bella Soda, two people for the price of one, so that you get to see plays once, twice, thrice, four times, maybe even possibly if the play needs it. Now, when we get to all of our incredible people here in Portland, Maine, it starts with Emerson Elmgren, the Iron Horse of BTV, who is close to working 200 straight broadcasts, took a rebounded foul ball off the head and didn't miss a pitch tonight because she's the best in the business. Same goes for Nick Keldy on the roaming camera and holding down the third base cam. The fans love Nick Keldy, no surprise there. On the high home camera, it is Mr. Clayton Franklin, a guy who was born for Portland, Maine, our associate producer slash wireless man for the first part of the ball game before Nick Keldy took over, Mr. Chris Haynes, the Swiss Army Knife of BTV, on the low home man, my roommate from Hartford, Mr. Braden Hoskovic. If you ever need to share a hotel room with a guy, Braden is your man. And our video legend, Mr. Chris Sachi, saucing up the Reese Hampton Showman of the Night highlight. Our YouTube king, Zach Bro, doing so much behind the scenes, it would make your eyes bleed. And our Zappos Cake Club queen giving away the pair of hokas. It is Melissa Beal, a.k.a. Melisent Bean Supreme, a.k.a. Melly Beans. Uh, for Josh Tolevsky, who is the best color commentary man and statistical savant you could ever want, you're an absolute superstar, buddy. Biko, you're a Portland play-by-play -play star, and I'm proud of you, slugger. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that. That was everything I could have ever wanted in my broadcasting career. Uh, for Chad Reese, the coordinating producer of BTV, who just absolutely bodied a fan, and that's okay because we just took ourselves uh, a nice little camera. Yeah, we're on TV. You want to say something to the people at home? Hi. Hi! Really good work by you, Superstar. Uh, I am Biko Scala for our executive producers of BTV, Jared Orton, Emily, Jesse, and Carrie Cole, as well as the great people who joined us in the booth tonight, Tom Karen from Nesson and uh, Bella Fieri. That's right. We will see you tomorrow night on Nesson, and the game will be posted on the Bananas YouTube a week after it airs. So you can check it out on Nesson and Nesson 360 tomorrow night. We will be live at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much to everyone who hung out with us tonight. It is a thrilling come from behind 5-4 walk-off victory with Michael Deeb, your hero. We will see if the Nanners can take the great state of Maine tomorrow. And of course, we'll see you